For Jesus, you're my everything. For Jesus, you're my everything. For Jesus, you're my everything. For Lord Jesus, you're my everything. For Lord Jesus, you're my everything. For Lord Jesus, you're my everything. And you are life, and you are love. You are more than enough. It's you are life, and you are love. You are more than enough, Lord. You are life and you are love. You are more than enough. It's you are life and you are love. You are more than enough. You're the one I love. The one I love. You're the one I love. You're the one I love. It's you are life. You are love, you are more than enough. You are life, you are love, you are more than enough. You are life, you are love, you are more than enough. You're the one I love, the one I love. Jesus, my everything. Lord 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 Jesus, my everything. Jesus, my everything. Oh, Jesus, you're my everything. Lord Jesus. Jesus. 
with the shouts, with the song, with the praise I sing. Oh, with the shouts, with the song, with the praises ring. Oh, with the shouts, with the song, with the praises sing. Oh, with the shouts, with the song, with the praises ring.
Lord Jesus, you my And he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved and he is mine. The banner of me is love. Oh, I am my beloved and he is mine. The banner of me is love. Oh, I am my beloved and he is mine. The banner of me is love. Oh, I am my beloved and he is mine. The banner of me is And he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved, and he is mine.
Everybody said the truth. Lord, you're the truth, the life, the way. You're the truth, the life, the way. Lord Jesus, you're the truth, the life, the way. Lord, we ask you to take your power, come rain. Father, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you would bring all of this that is going on to an end. Father, we ask you that you'd bring it to a quick end. Now, Lord, we know and understand that you're giving men the opportunity to repent and, and acknowledge that there is a different kind of living, that there is a different kind of way to go in and we know father god that you're going to allow sin to fully manifest itself in all of its iniquity and all of its corruption so that everyone can forever see the end of it that no one will ever doubt throughout the ages what would be the end of the simplest smallest beginning of sin and iniquity and so father we say have your own way Lord, we know that you, the righteous judge, that judges everything according to your word. But, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would do a work that would turn the hearts of your people back unto you. For, Lord, you see and understand how that we have profaned your name, how that we have misrepresented you, how that we have borne false witness against the truth as you have relayed it to us. And revealed it to us through your only begotten Son, the eternal Word, Christ Jesus. Father, you see, O oh God, that as, 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 as it, it's the same as it was in the days when there was no king. That every man has turned to do those things which are right in his own eyes. But Father, we know that you set up Jesus Christ, the King of kings. That now no one would do those things which are right in their own eyes. But that everyone would simply come as subjects to your kingdom as servants to the king of kings and to the lord of lords and submit ourselves O god to that which you are doing in your righteousness in the reign of truth and in the reign of of equality to where that all men may be saved making no difference between the jew or the gentile between the bondman or the free between male or female no preference or partiality given to just one people's group. But have called and proclaimed that all men everywhere should repent. And so, Father, today we have these that are gathered here in your name. Now, I'm praying. I'm praying. I don't care what you're working on. Hey, let's stop. You guys act like that. You act like that these things are common. I'm not. This isn't common. I don't care. I don't care nothing about the web. Honestly. Don't, you need, you need to hear. I, I don't want people talking, running around. I'm praying, I'm addressing the almighty God. The reality of it is, as many people are absent of the consciousness of the reality of God. And so I, I don't want you to do that. I don't, like, I don't like looking around and seeing people doing something other than acknowledging the presence of the Lord. Listen, I'm not, I'm not playing any games around here. You might not believe in prophecy, but I do. You may, you may think that something has got to go down in a religious kind of way. I don't. I believe that Almighty God is present in this place, that Jesus Christ is gathered here, and that He, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you can mess with anything I got, but don't mess with Jesus. I, I don't mess with the presence of the Holy Ghost. You can mess with anything that I have. Some people covet their cars. Some people covet their houses. Some people make their mama the most important person in their life, and that's good. That's fine. And their wives, I tell you right now, Jesus is the most important person in my life. You can be seated. Okay, I just want you to know you interrupted prayer. I want you to know you interrupt, interrupted a conversation between the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus through me. 
I just want you to understand that. Because otherwise, you're never, gonna, you're never going to learn reverence. Reverence is something that is a thing of the past, by and large, for most people. What happened was there was a great breakthrough. Man thought he had a great breakthrough. And that was he was going to question authority. And oh, man, well, great liberty, questioning authority. And then all of a sudden begin to despise authority. And now we are living in the transition of going from despising authority to defying authority. That is the progression. People say, what's wrong with my little sin? Well, God's going to allow this thing to go until everybody can see the, fruit, the full ripe fruits of it. Because sin has an end. Wherever it begins, you can say, oh, it's just a little thing. It has an end. It will only progressively get worse and worse. First and foremost, the tyranny that exists within the framework of men trying to rule other men ultimately advance their agenda within the academic institution. But basically, what a great strategy because what we did was we all bought into an idea and a scheme that we should turn our, our three-year-olds and our four-year-olds over to an academic system. So what a brilliant strategy. Okay, well, if, they're gonna, if they've all bought into turning their children over to us, what we're going to do is we're going to be we're going to slowly infiltrate everything that they're teaching their children at that age and we're going to start off with just some things that are just subtle and small and we know they're very forgiving and and they're very accommodating and they're just going to go ahead and and um, just uh, you know tolerate it and we have and we did and we have and are and continue to do it it's stop it's it's changing now i was so I was so blessed by the, the, one of the, the top admirals in the Navy who, you know, Obama said you can't give out Bibles, just send them to the appropriate uh, counselor if they've got a problem. And, and he said, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm serving a higher commander in chief. And he, went, he personally went and handed out Bibles. Because, you know, ultimately it's coming to an end. We're drawing the thing. We're drawing the thing. We're drawing a line under it, you know, see. You know, and I say, Father, why do you let it go on? Father said, I'm going to have a testimony and a witness throughout all ages that the smallest little sin will result in the greatest chaos. That little sin that you like, that you accommodate, that you condone, that little bit of rebellion that you have an excuse for. Yeah. You know, a person pointed out to me the other day, he said, everybody I know who has a dominant figure for a woman in their family, their kids turn out totally weird. I, I agree with that. Why? Because they're defying a law of God. They're defying a law of God. You don't defy spiritual laws and end up on the right side, end up blessed. You just simply don't. You don't. I think that one of the things they're going to do in the latter part of my life, should the Lord permit me, one of the things I want to do, I should say it this way, is I want to write out all spiritual laws. I want to write them out, and I want to write out the consequences to violating spiritual laws and the consequences to keeping them. Because I don't even believe that most people even know what, it, what spiritual laws really are. They don't really understand how to define spiritual laws. If you curse, you'll be cursed. If you bless, you'll be blessed. You don't even know, don't even know how to begin with spiritual laws. Father, I pray you. You would make manifest everything in Jesus' mighty name. That everything would be revealed. That nothing could be hid. I ask you to shine your floodlight on everybody's life. Start with mine. Make it all transparent. Reveal everything that, needs, that is hidden. Uh, because you know what? Your mind will justify a lot of things. Your mind will play tricks on you. And then here's what's the biggest problem. You get a lot of people around, come around you and they will confirm your perception. It is the greatest arrogance when people speak on behalf of God and, and they do anything less than quote the word of God. And, you know, I've been having people read the Bible just to prove to them that they can read the Bible through in 90 days. Something you should do four times a year anyways. Should do it every quarter. People, oh, my goodness, gracious, they're putting a load upon us. I'm telling you, listen to me, this. I want you to understand something. You can have everything prepared for you and all sorted out and all, all you know, all properly you know, organized. And if you're not ready for eternity, you've lost out on everything because you're a living soul. You're an eternal being. And if you're not preparing to meet your maker, if you're not preparing to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you are of all people, the foolish, most foolish people. Why? Because you sat in his presence. Because you, you heard great preaching. You saw the moving of the spirit, but you never responded 
There have been many people throughout the ages. I mean, those of you, basically, you should be, base, if you've been following our, uh, you know, our outline, you should be basically finishing up with Judges right now. And you can see what's been going on. You can see how the people heard the audible voice of God. You can see how they stood before the presence of God and His glory was like a fire that's burning. You know what they did? Look at how they behaved themselves. That is how men behave themselves. There is an incurable disease. It's called rebellion. It's an incurable disease called rebellion. The only, the only cure for it is a miracle. We call incurable disease orphan diseases. There's no cure for it. It's an orphan disease. There's no cure for it. Only a miracle can cure it. And the miracle that, that, needs, to be take, that needs to take place is the miracle of a circumcised heart. You can see at the end of De Deuteronomy, what did the Lord said? Circumcise your heart so that you won't be stiff-necked stiff anymore. Stiff neck, not being willing to turn to listen to me. I'm talking to you. You won't listen to me. You're just going to do it. You're going to wake up in the morning, and you're going to do it your own way. He said, don't talk rough to me. I'm going to tell you right now, Christ Jesus is going to talk rough to you. That's His right. eyes are going to be flame of fire. He said, I can't believe he looked at me with the eyes of a flame of fire. That's what he's going to do. Yes. And I tell you right now, all I see in it is love. Because Father says, I'm going to fix the disease of iniquity and sin. I'm going to show all humanity what it ultimately, the, the sin that you like, the sin that you justify, the sin that you condone, the sneaking around that you permit. Father says, I'm going to show you the full end of it. I'm going to let it come. I'm going to let the grapes of sin become fully ripened. In other words, he also calls them the grapes of wrath. People think God's changed his opinion about sin. God's not changed his opinion about sin. Sin, the sin is found 4,898 times in the Bible. The word exists more than any other word, pretty much. It's in the top five of a single word. And I'm not talking about its synonyms like iniquity or wickedness. If you put them all together, sin, wickedness, iniquity, transgression, it is a singular most talked about subject in the Bible. And yet the singular most under, misunderstood subject in the Bible. Why? Satan doesn't want people to get the whole picture. They want to just do their little Bible studies, follow their little, you know, their little manuals, their little, you know, guides to read in the Bible. Instead of getting after, just start at the beginning in Genesis and read through Revelation, then start again, then read through it to Revelation, then start again, and then read through to Revelation, then start again and read through to Revelation. This is how we spend our lives. This is how we begin to get a fuller picture. This is how God's able to talk to us. It's how he's able to lock down in our life the personal issues and needs that need to be addressed. Yes. We are blind without the word of God. We blind. We blind. We walking in darkness. And as soon as you mix the word of God with any personal opinions, as soon as you mix the word of God with philosophies and ideologies of men, you have absolutely done away with it. You've done away with the word. It's no longer his word. You've eliminated it from your life. Because now in your mind, your mind plays tricks on you. Men can convince themselves of things so easily. Self-justification is a terrible state of being. Lack of perception, recognizing what's really there, is a terrible state of being. The best thing I could say is state of being. We can't perceive anything as we ought without the Word of God. It's a light unto our feet. It's a lamp unto our path. We do not know where to turn right or to turn left except by the Word of God. Amen. Somebody said, oh, I'm just doing it by the Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth, all he's going to be doing is testifying of the Word. All he's going to do is be declaring the Word. That's all he's going to do. He just speak of himself. People say, oh, he doesn't speak of himself. And then they want to try to turn it around and say, the Holy Ghost, don't speak about himself. That's nonsense. Don't say that in any language. It's really all the Word of God is saying is the Holy Ghost is testifying of the truth. He's declaring the Word of God. He's saying what God already said. By and large, Jesus, all he did was say what Father said. That's all he did. There's very few things. He said, like, one new commandment I'm going to give you. <laughs> I'm going to give you one new commandment. You ready? You know, there's already over 2,000 uh, commandments. Mom, I'm going to give you one new one. Now I'm going to give, he's going to give us one new commandment, but the beautiful thing of it is he's going to empower us with the ability to do the commandment. <laughs> you know what he's going to do? What he said? I'm going to empower you to do it because God never asks us to do anything unless he empowers us to do it. That's right. 
He said, I want you to love one another with the same love that I've loved you with. And so he says, I want, I want to move you from loving your neighbor as yourself because that's human love. You understand that? Right. And God gave people the capacity to love their neighbor as themselves, but they didn't want to do it because they were stiff-necked. Hey, when God dwells in your midst, you can do it. come on now. Give me a break. When God dwells in your midst and he's there to empower you, you know why, you know why God chose Moses to talk with him face-to-face? -face? Because when the opportunity was available, he's the only one who wanted it. I'm going to tell you right now, because when the opportunity was available, he was the only one who wanted it. Everybody else said, don't let him talk to us anymore. You go talk to him. You come back and tell us what he says. And then nothing changes. Same thing goes on today. We watch it go on today. You live in perilous times and you don't know it. You acting like you live in forever and that everything will continue on is the same as they've been. I'm telling you, it's not. You acting like you can violate spiritual laws and get away with it. You cannot. It's impossible. Every man... Every woman, every boy, every girl, every person shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And they will give an account for the deeds that are done in their body, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Every man. I see that in two different dimensions. I see that in one dimension. As soon as you die, there is a judgment that comes down. And I believe that judgment comes down in, on the basis of, of the judgment seat of Christ. It's because I believe it's all men. I believe it's everybody. I know that, can, I know that from a... By and large, from a exegetical point of view and context point of view, most people look at the verse of Scripture that Paul that I'm referring to that Paul speaks of in Corinthians, and they say, well, that's just about just the righteous. Everybody is standing before him. Amen. Everybody. And then there's ultimately going to be a second judgment where, where all, the, all of the unrighteous did. I said unrighteous because that's what God said. Those who do not walk in righteousness. How do I learn how to walk in righteousness? The Word of God. Obeying the Word of God. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ came, and he gave us the, uh, he, he came. He's the eschatological event of the, of the, uh, of, of the end days. He's the, of the last times, of last moments. Huh? He's the, he's the completion and fulfillment of all God's work. It's done. It's over. It's complete. It's finished. Fullness of grace and fullness of truth has come empowered us with divine ability now to do the word to do the word people just want to do whatever they believe the word has to say i pray that you understand you know that a lot if there's ever a, a moment in time people need to be reading the bible i've read the bible you, give me a break you read the bible how many times once you, you can't even get nothing once what are you 100 percent recall you got 100 recall and you can now just quote it all in your mind you can just picture the page there are many things I can just picture the page and I can read it off the page. I don't have 100% recall. I'm going to tell you right now, and even with the ability to look and just see, remember the screen or remember the page and read off the page, every time I read the Bible, all, I'm, just standing going, I'm just standing there going, wow, I, have I ever read this before? Because Father opens up our eyes to see things. We, we, come on now. You make good grades and you can make good grades in school and still you're right back at the beginning. When you start reading the Bible, you're like, what? What? How, how does this all fit together? First review, you don't understand, you don't understand 99.9% .9 of what was just said. 99.9%, .9 you sit there try to wrestle around with it in your mind. Don't comprehend it. Don't understand it. You're gonna have to continue to read it. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna go, oh, I see why God said that there. I see why he said, kill them all destroy them i see it now i understand now i understand he's dealing with sin and iniquity he's dealing, dealing with an incurable wound he's doing with that which will just continue to contaminate he's dealing with a virus he's dealing with a plague he's dealing with something that will absolutely has no cure and all he's going to do is destroy everybody around it oh i'm getting it now i'm seeing the love of god now you can't even get it like you can't get it you're not going to get it and the sad thing about it is if you know it, look if i was talking about you getting in the word of god three hours a day well, you know what? Maybe that was just a little bit too much for you. Two hands for beginners. But we're not even doing that. We're talking about an hour a day, and most people won't do it. Oh, they'll hour a spot check it a day, maybe. Or they'll convince themselves because they just stay in one or two chapters of the Bible. Huh? huh. But they don't understand this, the need of continuous systematic reading to look at the, oh, the big picture, the overview, to understand... The, the whole word of God is the important, is 
is, is the most important thing for you and I to grasp. The whole counsel of God, not part of it. And what Father does then on top of that is it's more than an intellectual exercise. It's more than a discipline. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He says, okay, look at that. I look at that. Mark's continually coming to me. Riz continually coming to me. Anne's continually coming to me. He's got, her word, got the word open all the time. Look at her. She's consistent with it. And you know what today is? Oh, I went to church. I don't need to read the Bible. <laughs> yeah, you do. Because you need to be disciplined with the word of God. Amen. Some of that, I don't like the word discipline. Okay, well then be faithful. Because <laughs> huh? God's faithful. He's going to teach you faithfulness. Right. And you're going to split hairs to find the difference between faithfulness and discipline. <laughs> and then you have to look under a microscope after you get that done. Are you listening to me? Yes. Give me a break. It's just, it's, I really, it's by and large the same thing. It's just that faithfulness makes it far more pointed concerning our servitude to him. Amen. Well, what is it that you've been doing all day long anyways? What is it that you can't afford an hour of time for God? And then he goes, comes along and he tells us, oh, no, now we've got to give an hour of time for prayer. <laughs> well, the problem is that you, you, you live in under a realm that you don't even understand. You haven't stepped into a, a relationship with them. And, and we want to train you. You know, we've tried to train people in music. All they do is get upset because they want to do it their way. We say, no, stop. And then we don't want you doing that way. Oh, he don't like me. He's rough. <laughs> no, we want to teach you something different. We're not interested in what you're doing. You can go do whatever you want to do on your own. Fine, prosper. Be in health and prosper. But we want to show you another thing that God has showed us to do. Well, Father deals with that all the time. He deals that with us all the time. He, we want to continue to do whatever we want to do. Holy Ghost say, no, 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 no. I want to show you a different thing. So oh, I just don't know how anybody lives a Christian life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because you don't have time. You're busy filling your mind with everything that belongs to this world. You do, you're busy pursuing your own interests, your own financial situation, your own cares in this life, your own prosperity, your own provision. Of course not. Of course you don't understand. Of course when I speak like this, you can't get it. It's the truth now. I'm telling you, man. Listen, we live in perilous times. I'm telling you right now. You better, you better check your stuff. You better check your stuff. Father's calling out for people to come, and, come apart with him into a solitary place. It's time, to, it's time you start taking evaluation and inventory of your life and to find how much of the world is in your, how much of the world is in your checkbook. How much of the world is on your body? How much of the world is in your mind? Because the Lord says, come out from among them, be separate, and then I will receive you. And you're not going to change that word. That's not Old Testament. That is New Testament. You need to take inventory because men will justify their self, justify their state. And the first thing they do is they begin immediately to look around and they do a comparative analysis. Because especially when you live around in a competitive, when you're raised up in a competitive world, it's all about are you head and shoulders or even just a nose ahead of everybody else? And then if you are, you're good. I'm good. And, and then you try to spot check with somebody that you think you believe is really on the pedestal of being right with God. And then you try to examine yourself <laughs> to them. But your analysis is incomplete. It's incomplete. And, and some people in the school try to prove, prove it to you over and again how incomplete your analysis was. You never believed it. It was always the teacher's fault. They didn't teach it good enough. Huh? They gave you something that was not in the chapters you were supposed to read. Remember all the excuses why you didn't do so well? <laughs> it just is describing to you a limited, limited area of your reasoning and perception and ability to function. And now God's taken us into a whole other realm that, that is, is far beyond that realm of reasoning and intellect as the, earth, as the heaven is above the, the earth. People don't get it. They, I'm going to do it my way. You know what? If you, when you read, when you got finished reading the end of, uh, of, uh, of Joshua, you discovered that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. At the end of all the miracles, Joshua looked around and said, my goodness gracious, you guys, you guys. I'll tell you what. Do whatever you're going to do. It's for me and my house. Choose you to stay who you serve. As free of me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But you can quickly see what they chose. That's right. You can quickly see what they chose. It is the heart and state of men. They rebel against the leaderships of God. No matter how many proofs. 
No matter how many, how many miracles, there's always a reason to believe that you can trust in Korah or Dathan or whoever else. They all went and did what was right in their own eyes because there was no king. Today, we act like there is no king, but he's been crowned king of kings, and I hope you'll crown him. Amen. We act as though there is no master, but you a slave. And to do your own will is sedition. And to live out your own life is treason. He purchased you. Somebody said, oh, I'm carnal, sold under sin. Yeah, you are. Now, hear the call of salvation. Hear the call of redemption to be born again. He'll purchase you with his own blood so that you might be bought with a price. He will redeem you and set you free and liberate you now to live this life so that you no longer be carnal but spiritual. Hallelujah. Born of the spirit, not of the flesh alone. People miss the whole counsel of God because they have myopia, spiritual myopia. Huh? And in addition to that, they have spiritual tunnel vision. Huh? And then I could continue on and talk about other disease states in the seeing, perceptive realm. I don't have to listen to what you have to say. Uh, I've got a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. Prove it. Prove it. You think that you can defy leadership and governorship, the government of God, be right with God? It's testimony against you. You cannot. Somebody said, but what if I come under the leadership of King Saul? God take good care of you. Huh? God take good care of you. He'll deliver you. But I'm going to tell you right now, when somebody's declaring the word of God to you, that's not the leadership of King Saul. That's the leadership of God Almighty. And so if you end up calling God's leadership Saul's leadership, you in danger of blasphemy. Better watch yourself. Because watch out, your mind will justify things. Justify you. Why don't you rather be first one to lay your head upon his chest and say, Lord, is it I? Why don't you quit justifying yourself and say, okay, I'm going to do inventory of my life. And do inventory of everything. God's going to show you how well you, when you start to stand there and tell him you don't understand, he's going to show you how well you did inventory in your own life. How well you did inventory of your checkbook. How well you did inventory of the precious things that you owe. You know where your emeralds are right now. You know where your diamonds are right now. You know where your gold cougarans are right now. You know where all the stuff is that you have, and you know how many you have. The Lord said, but you never took inventory of that which the riches that I gave and the areas of your life that were not in conformity to my word. God gives you a lifetime to repent. People, if you die in your sins, you'll spend eternity without God in a place called hell. You listen to me. If you die in your sin, if you die continuing on in the sin, you'll spend eternity in a place called hell. You better, figure, you better figure out what you need to do to stop doing what it is you're doing that's wrong. Because God's given plenty of provision. And so what we do is we tell people. And now, I saw recently, I saw a post of one of the preachers uh, that, that used to be here in this area. Someone who, you know, we were flocked on too, and he, he took a selfie with a big old cigar. He was smoking on a big old cigar so he could show everybody how free he is. Yeah, you, about, you about as free as the devil. I hope you're watching me right now. I know how many different people peek, sneak, a, sneak a peek. See, what, is he, what crazy things is he saying now? Because they know who I am. They know the spirit that I'm speaking of. In other words, I should say it that way. They know what God's called me to do. Whether the, where the lay people do or not, they know. Because they have enough walk with God to be able to discern it. People always looking, people always go into the ivory palaces. They never go to the manger. Huh? They always go to the places that, that men gather together that look all, well, you know, beautiful and, and, and glamorous. They never go out in the wilderness. See one shaken by the spirit of the living God. Always got a reason why I don't have to listen. Satan's always got a means by which he discredits the anointing. He's always got a means by which he tries to condemn the word of God so that people don't listen. Hath God not said? Huh? He's always saying that. He's always saying stuff like that. That you should die. Hath God not said that you should die? 
day that you eat, you will not die. You will not really die. It's not really that way. You misunderstood him. He's a little bit, he's a little bit conservative in his interpretation of the scripture. Huh? You know, after all, he's just a man. Sure, I am. But where's God's plan? Where all of a sudden he's anointed his people to speak on behalf of him. Where are you going to identify those people? You need to identify them. And you need to go to them quickly. But more than likely, if you're rebellious, you're going to identify those who are not of him. An antichrist spirit and you're going to flock unto them. This is what happens. You know, I hear the, I hear the intercessions of hell. I heard the intercessions of the hill this morning. Oh, you don't need to go to church. Ah. Uh, you know, after all, all he's going to do is holler and scream at you. You need hollering and screaming at. Amen. You do. Because your way is not right. But God's giving you an opportunity. You, I said your way is not right. But God's giving you an opportunity to learn his way. To learn the ways of life. To walk in the paths thereof. Come on. <laughs> Somebody says they've grown up not being, I don't need to be rebuked anymore. I, I, I can't imagine any greater state of arrogance and any greater act of defiance. I don't, I don't need to be rebuked anymore. Oh, oh, I need to be rebuked, but you need to be careful how you do it. You need to watch your voice tone. Man, I'm telling you right now, when you're barely hanging on to life and you're about to slip into hell, it don't matter what bo voice tone. When you're about to be burned up, you don't care what the voice tone is. You just want to know where the exit's at. Yes, yes. Tell me, where's the exit? Yes. Oh, he, he wasn't telling me how to get, he wasn't describing the exit properly enough. And if he would have been sweeter in his voice tones, huh, and I could have, I could have discerned more love in what it was he was saying, then I would have gone to the exit. Nonsense. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Bottom line of it is people don't, people don't believe in hell. They don't believe in hell because they don't know about God screaming and hollering. They don't know say, about the wrath of God saying, there's no way. I'm not allowing that stuff in my, way, in my realm. I'm not I have no fellowship with it. I have no communion, communion with it. When we say that, G when we're singing the song, Jesus, you all, all that I desire, people don't even get it. I don't think people, most people, even the upper, the upper, you know, spiritual people don't even get it. Not in this day and time, because we are so overwhelmed with all of the rebellion and all the pride of life and all the things that belong to the cares of this life. We very different than the church was 100 years ago. Just go back and read. I do that. I live in this. I'm not just speaking on the top of my head. Go back and read what they preached. Just go back and read. Just go back and read what. Huh. Dwight Moody preached. D.L. Moody. I mean, he was a radical preacher. Not only was it just basically a, you know, kind of a fundamentalist, average kind of, you know, congregational slash Baptist preacher. Just because he understood, he understood the call of God to holiness and purity. See, he say, you Armenian, are you Calvinist? No, I'm not, either one. And I don't think he was either. People just want to define everything. Oh, are you an Armenian? So you see everything through Armenianism. Are you Calvinist? So you see everything through the lens of Calvinism? No. You either the Word of God or you're not the Word of God. You either, uh, listen, you are, the, are you either a follower of the Word of God or are you a follower of Christian philosophy? There's two camps. Hey, forget about Armenianism or Calvinism. You either follow the Word of God holy or you follow Christian philosophy, period. It's just it. Somebody says, oh, well, I got a little bit of both. You no. Know, as soon as you put 1% Christian philosophy in the midst of the Word of God, you got, you got Christian philosophy. Are you with me? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> this isn't anything to multiply by, by one. This is anything multiplied by something else. It's different. Are you with me? You understand? <laughs> Jesus, help us. You know, people, here's where you stay. You walk humbly before the Lord. I mean, the Father has made a real something. Just walk humbly before me. Do what's right and walk humbly before me. So he said, I want to know what to do. I want to understand how to do what's right. Well, he says, his word has come to tell you. Then he's put apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in the midst of the church to come and tell you. Huh? Huh? 
And then God's got special anointings and gifts on that. You better watch out who you, who you push it around because you're going to push around, around the wrong person one day. And you can come back without an arm, basically. And I say that more in a spiritual context than I do. It. Well, I mishandled God's people before and got away with it. Well, you know what? You're going to mishandle the wrong, you're going to mishandle the wrong man of God. The wrong person. And you're going to find yourself mishandling the Holy Ghost. Because, see, for me, all these things are Holy Ghost things. This is sacred. It ain't about if, you know, the only reason I've got a, a camera going on is so somebody can hear the gospel. Well, what happens if the person running the camera is so distracted they don't hear the gospel? Then burn the camera. Bust the thing. I'm more interested in people that are sitting in here than the people that are listening out there. Now, if we can all get together enough on, a, on the same page to where that we can all honor the Lord and do this thing together, then, yeah, let's reach more folks. But you know what? I'm interested in your soul. Amen. I'm not going to look past you because we already got Well, you, we netted you, so, you know, you here. My goodness, you got things to learn. You need, the part of the gospel is to... Part of the gospel is to reach the lost. That's part of it. Those that believe should be saved. Those that do not believe should be damned. That's what the scripture says. Then the next part is to teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. So that's the next part of it. The next part of it is make disciples out of nations. And so I'm going to do all part. I'm not going to just do one part of it and just leave you. Okay, you're good. You're good. Ah, once you say that Jesus come into my heart, uh, once you say, oh, God, I'm yours, then you write with God forever. Then tell Satan that. Because really that doctrine came from a person who believed in the ultimate reconciliation of all souls, including Lucifer himself, that Lucifer one day would be saved. So you actually a believer in heresy. Yeah. Oh, well, you can't, you can't text, you can't actually um, proof text Satan will one day be redeemed. But you think you can prove text that once you're saved, you're always saved. But it's the same thing. It came from the same root. It's a lie. Oh, but the Lord said, no man can pluck me out of, no one can pluck you out of my hand. You know what? You can choose not to walk with God. People think grace is just a New Testament idea. It's not. Grace has always been around. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Abraham found grace. Huh? I can go on with grace. But grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to read this verse of Scripture to you. I want, you, I want to just help you here for just a minute. Listen, I'll just tell you people, this is what the Lord says. He's told you to follow your leadership. If you don't like your leadership, you've got a problem. If you can't follow your leadership, you've got a problem. And it's called rebellious, it's called re a rebellious state. It starts with people, it starts with wives with their husbands. You can start finding its formation in children with their parents, wives with their husbands. Many, you know, many times people who have rebellious wives, they themselves are rebellious. It's just a spirit in their house. I've seen, I've seen it among preachers. I, I mean, after you've been around, hanging around, walking in the spirit, being used of God and the gifts of the Spirit to minister to people to get them out of the air of their ways, you start seeing routines. You say, Satan doesn't need, this ain't doesn't need to come up with nothing new. One trick works on all of us over and again. That's just how stupid he regards us to be. And that's probably just how stupid we really are. Without the Spirit of the Lord, that's just how dumb we are. He just needs one trick. And then he blames God. This is what you made? I'll take them all out with one trick. Somebody's got to get stirred up and say, huh, what, what? What was that? What was that? You, you say I'm yours. You devil. You say I'm yours. Somebody had to get stirred up and say, what? what are you talking about? Are you saying I'm yours? I'm going to prove to you right now who's, who, who I belong to. You're going to come on with your lies and your, and your tricks and, and, and your, your arrogant reports against God and his anointed. I'm going to show you. I'll defy everything you say and everything you suggest. Then I'm going to stomp on your head. And that's what the scripture says. You crush his head. That's the ministry of Jesus. Huh? He, he bruise your heel, but you'll stomp on his head. You'll crush his head. Huh? I, you know, I used to kill snakes with sticks and with shovels. Now I like to just get over there and take them out with the heel of my boot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just get real personal about it. I mean, I... 
I, I don't like poisonous things. She might, oh, leave the poisonous things alone. Well, you leave them alone. You let them develop in your backyard. Huh? You let them prosper in your house. Not me. Not me. I remember watching a rattlesnake chasing down a three-year-old boy one day. Literally, he was running him down. He was chasing down a three-year-old boy. You think I'm gonna, you think I'm gonna let just leave? Oh, let it. He's one of God's creatures. Yeah, he's going to one of God's creatures that's not gonna live around me. The devil is one of God's creatures. He's not living around me. He's one of God's creatures that rebelled and came under the authority of his own sin and iniquity. Let me, can I make it simple for you today? Sure. Righteousness is of God. Sin is of the devil. Amen. Who are you of? I'm going to say it again. Righteousness is of God. Sin is of the devil. Who are you of? But then the word of God can prove that you are. And when you read the word of God and all of a sudden and you've got a right relationship with the Lord and your heart convicts you, you better get yourself right with God. When all of a sudden you can't stand up in the analysis of the word of God and you've got to go to justifying your state, that is iniquity. That is a deception. You need to get under the light of his presence. You need to let the floodlight of heaven shine upon your soul and everywhere God points his finger on your life and you begin to, you begin to have that tugging, that conviction of the Holy Ghost saying, look, you better watch yourself. you doing something similar. You better rise up, fall down on the ground, say, oh, God, forgive me. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Yeah. People are messing around with uncleanness all the time. Uncleanness is a broad word. Come on, people. Just because you live in a, in a world and a community that allows it. There's so many people that have been raised in rebellious Christian homes. They're rebels. And they believe that their walk with God is what they would define as a right walk with God because they were raised in a rebellious home. And so that was their model of walking with God. And so they believe that that's the right state with God. Preacher comes along and says, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. They say, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. You wrong, you wrong, you wrong. Oh, I want to go back to what I was. No, you don't. You weren't even nothing then. Yes. And you're barely anything now. So why don't you go ahead and walk with him so you can learn to be what he wants you to be. You Quick, get out of your past. Get out of, your, get out of the, 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 the place that you're in right now. And understand that he's called you to a place where you can fully mature. Where you can be taught all of his ways. Where you can live the life of the overcomer. Where you can shine with his brightness. You don't, you don't, you don't, you're not shrouded with your stubbornness. An inability to, to respond to God is a hard heart. A stiff neck, a hard heart creates a stiff neck. God worked a miracle to give us a soft heart so that we have be simply responsive to him. Anybody who's responsive to the anointing, to someone who ministers on the anointing, is responsive to God. Those who are sit stubbornly and defiantly against the anointing and those who minister on behalf of God sit stubbornly and defiantly against God, Christ Jesus himself. It is so true. And that light shines in your life all the time. And when you look around and you see something, I watch my kids. And I've watched, uh, you know, and when they were growing up. And if I saw any kind of, they're not paying attention or any kind of defiance, I was all over them. I wasn't all over them for the grades. I care less. Honestly, whatever. I was all over them with that things of the Spirit. Huh? I was all over how they responded to the Holy Ghost. There's some of you I'd like to take you out and spank you because you're stubborn. I'm just telling you like it is. Yes. Why? To save your soul from hell because you think you're right and you're not. But I'm not allowed to do that. But I can turn you over to the correction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And some of you I have. So that's why I haven't been working out so well. Amen. Just let you know what's happening. You say, I wonder what's going on. Well, we turned you over to the correction of the Holy Ghost. And everybody should be going, praise God. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> How mean. There he goes again. <laughs> he turned us over the correction of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm let, Papa's going to come spank you. He's going to chase you. Somebody's not saved. I'll, you know, if somebody's 
I'm not born again, I'll wrestle with them. I'll get in their face. Yeah, I'm meeting with you after church. But if you've been born again, and, and you keep coming back, you know, and I'm just meeting with you. But if you've been born again, you're giving your life over the Lord, and you have the capacity to hear and understand the Word of God. Huh? Then it's time for you to be able to learn that you hear this voice of the Holy Ghost. But he's not gonna, he's not gonna, he's not gonna walk over top of or run over top of your willingness to talk to yourself and counsel your own self and then believe what yourself told yourself. And now you have an agreement. You and you you and you agree. You have a witness with yourself. You bear witness with yourself that you're correct. But had you just taken the time to read through the Bible one time, the Holy Ghost would have spoken to you over and over and over and over and over again. Amen. If you made it a lifestyle, if you made it a lifestyle reading the Word of God, the Holy Ghost would be talking to you over and over again. There's every time people need to read the Word of God. It's now because there's so many seducing spirits and doctrines of devil that are taking the masses. The majority are running after it. Yes. You can have everything going for you in this life. I'm going to tell you right now, the moment you breathe out your last breath, it all changes. To not have everything ready for you to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for not have everything ready for you to step out of this life into the next life, life, you are the most foolish person that ever lived. People will laugh at you in hell if they laugh. You see, yeah, there, there, there's one of those people who were born again. They were in church all the time singing hallelujah, praise God. Look at them now. My dad and many people in his generation, the Lord took them into heaven and took them also into hell to give them a contrast. Those that God called to be evangelists. It's an amazing thing that the Lord did in that day. And they could never get away from the screams that they heard as they approached that place. They began to cry out to God, I cannot take it. I cannot take the screams. I cannot take the screams. The most horrific, most terrifying screams. People don't understand God's wrath. And now more than ever, the people accuse God of being unjust because they have condoned sin and bought in on sin. And now we have a new kind of hatred rising because now Christians are right in the number that are accusing God and say, no, no, that ain't the way it is. That's not God. That's a different God. That's another God, concept of God, an Old Testament concept of God that was distorted. Nonsense. I'll show you New Testament, same, same concept of God in the New Testament. I'll show you Jesus make a whip. Oh, that wasn't really in the Bible. That was added. And then every time I bring up a verse scripture, oh, that's not really there. It was added. Okay? So you take away from this book. Your name is taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't care how many times you went to the altar. I don't care how many people told you you were saved and that you'd never lose your salvation. Jesus said your name be taken out of the book. That's right. It's just a deceptive lie of the enemy over and again to to soothe people in their state of sin and iniquity that he might have their souls for eternity. I tell you, you better flee from the wrath to come because it's coming and it's wrath and it's not some arbitrary wrath because you ugly. You know what I'm saying? Are you not pretty enough or whatever? Huh? Are you not tall enough or don't fit into the scheme? It's not some arbitrary wrath. It's wrath against sin. Those who participate with it, those who practice it, those who work its evil work, those who find gratification from it, those who fulfill a need with it. There's all sorts of it. And pride, pride, the pride of life is the most subtle of all. It's the one that damns more people than any other sin. Any other category of sin, the pride of life damns more souls. There's more pride of life functioning within the context of the pulpit all the way to the lay person. I wish all God's people were scholars. I wish all people, all God's people were scholars of the word. I wish all God's people prophesied. Not every once in a while, but continually and heard the Holy Ghost saying very clearly, his definition between light and darkness. His definition between truth and lie. Because that's what he's doing. All these prophecies coming out, a lot of them are nonsense. It's self-empowering. It's, self, it, 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 it's, self it's accommodating. It's justifying a wicked state. God, did you think that Jesus justifies a wicked state? He does not justify a wicked state. He delivers us from a wicked state so that we might be justified. People think, people think that grace reigns through sin. Newsflash. Newsflash. 
Grace does not reign through sin. Grace reigns through righteousness. And the end thereof is eternal life. That this is something that God's people got to grab a hold of. Oh, God still is fine with me while I sin. No, he's not. No, he's not. He would think, well, God accepts me when I sin. No, he doesn't. Gives you an opportunity to repent. His grace and his mercy is such that he gives you an opportunity to repent. And let me say it in another word. He gives you an opportunity to change, uh, to be different, to be like him. He doesn't justify someone in their sin. God does never, never in the word of God does it say anywhere that God justifies somebody in their sin. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ that he might deliver us from sin, having redeemed us, made us anew by his blood and by his spirit. Having delivered us from our evil state, having delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness, having translated us, brought us into by an act of a miracle into the kingdom of the dear son. So that Jesus is now king. He's not going to be king one day. He's king now. He was already exalted, already glorified. People, God's people need to say, Lord, search me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Because reality of it is, is redemption brings a new creation that's brand new. New heart, new spirit, divine nature. It's just because of wrong teaching, rebellion, lies. People go back into their sin, justify it. And now they do have somewhat of a dual state of living. They do. Because they let sin back in. And I, don't, I think it's, I call it and believe in the scripture that it's perpetual backsliding. Let me read to you someone who had the strongest statements against sin. John chapter 1, verse 17. Let me read the introduction of John. John had the most radical statements against no sin. Not some sin. No sin being in the life of the believer. And I want you to read with me. I want you to just look at, at how he introduces the gospel. He introduces the gospel like this in verse 17. For the law was given to Moses by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He had a very clear understanding of the difference between the law and grace. Yes. Yes. People say, oh, because where there is no law, sin is not imputed. You don't understand what you're saying. Because there was no law in the days of Noah. And I'm going to tell you right now, God wiped clean the earth. He destroyed everything that had the breath of life in it except for one family. And if he couldn't have seen that family able to stand, every man and boy and girl, every human living creature would have been wiped from the face of the earth. And they burning in hell right now. Because they all eternal. Oh, I don't believe in that God. You better believe in him. Let me say something about him real quickly. Because you just read this. I love people reading the Bible. Just thinking that people are reading the Bible every day. Just thinking that people are reading through the Bible. In such a way they get through it before they forget what they read. You know what I'm saying? In 90 days you might be able by, well, by the, I don't care who you are, by the miracle help of, of the Holy Ghost, you can remember what you read. You know, 90 days before, you know, if you spent, if you spent the past five years in the gospel of John, you need to spread out a little bit. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, don't read the Old Testament first. Read the New Testament. Start at the beginning. Oh, but if you read the New Testament first, you won't understand. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Because the interpreter is with you. His name is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, well, just give him the book of John. What, the rest of it's bad? I'd say start at the beginning. Huh? If I'm going to give you a book that you're responsible for, I'm not going to tell you to start in chapter 23. You with me? Tell you start in chapter 1. Start at the beginning. So you can understand chapter 23. Because everything is built upon foundations. Huh? Exodus is built upon the foundation of Genesis. Actually, I can name every book of the Bible is built upon the foundation of Genesis. And the rest of the Bible is built upon the foundation of Genesis and Exodus combined. Look at this matrix. And then the rest of the chapters are built upon the, on the, on the combination of Genesis, Exodus, and Numbers combined. That's a pretty big factorial design, ain't it? Think about it. Those of you who understand math. 
There's a lot of parameters to cover there. God's calling us to simply come to him like little children. Believe what he says and do it. Huh? He says, go in there and make your bed. You don't need an interpreter, scholar, historian, and an and, 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 and ancient history expert. To understand what it means, go in there and make your bed. Huh? You don't, have to, you don't have to have, you know, some special speech therapy to learn how to say please. Yes, sir, and no, sir. Just like little children being taught of God how to properly respond to his anointing. People sit in churches all over America, and they do not grow and move in the, in the flow of the Holy Ghost and mature in the flow of the Holy Ghost because they will not say yes, sir, no, sir, and please. They've not learned the basic manners in terms of interaction with the Holy Ghost. And then they go make up that they prophesy. Nonsense. When you prophesy, God said you don't prophesy in a context where everybody can hear. Huh? Somebody starts prophesying to you. Say, hey, shh, wait, wait a minute. Hey, everybody, I've got somebody who wants to prophesy to me. Let's listen up. Go ahead. So that we can all judge whether it's of God or not. And my primary basis of judging is twofold. First, the word of God, and second is the discerning of spirits. There's a difference between your spirit and God's spirit and, and human spirit and demon spirits. Huh? And I, the many of the old men of God that have already died, died and gone on into glory, they said in the last days, the most important gift that needs to be functioning in the body of Christ and the individuals in the church is the discerning of spirits. And you know what? I tell you right now, you want to learn how to discern, have the gift of discerning of spirits. You take heed unto God's word. You obey God's word. You do what God's word says to do. Huh. He said, I do what God's word says to do. Why, they defy the pastor. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is silly. You really believe that? You, you are deceived then. Well, they defy the church. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many people bring line up on, beside me. The same response will be in the rebellious heart as it was when Father spoke himself. If I have Father speaking right now, right out, right out. He's standing right behind the pulpit, speaking from a fiery, glorious realm, out of the presence of heaven. Doesn't matter. This is the way it is. It's called rebellion. It's called a, it's called a heart imprisoned by deception. You're not right with God. You have the fruits showing you're not right with God. You have the testimony against yourself. You're not right with God. Huh. You know, over and again, children, obey your parents. If you don't, you got a testimony. You're not right with God. Wives, submit to your own husband. You're not right, you're not right with God if you don't. God's called all of his people to submit to the leadership. And, and on a level, God had many words he could have used. He said, obey those who have the rule Obey those that have the rule over you. Okay, I, won't have, I don't have to obey them. I don't believe they have the rule over me because I can prove that they did me unjustly. Okay, then you got, where's that scripture at? <clears throat> where, where was that at? I can prove. Okay, let me see that verse scripture. Because you prove it. You can prove, you can prove that. You can prove that. I'm proved just the opposite. I never threw a javelin at you. I never threw a javelin at you and sought your life to destroy you. Saul did to David. And what did God tell David? Don't touch my anointed. Don't touch, don't touch my anointed. And don't you do my prophets any harm. But if people justify states and it's completely contrary to the word of God and they use Christian philosophy to do it. Oh, well, we don't have to submit to anybody who's abusive. They say the same thing about father, that he's abusive. Because he's not allowed sin. Do not allow iniquity. And we're not making this about other things. We're not making this about how much land you own. You need to go buy more land. Huh? You need to go get more of this and go get more of that. So you could whatever. To abuse you or make merchandise. Out of you. We're just telling you the word of God. We're telling you to obey the word. We're telling you to step into joy and gladness. Oh, he's always telling us to step into joy and gladness. Think there's something wrong with people that don't have joy and gladness. Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. I, I, you are correct. 
perfectly correct. Praise God, you can hear. I believe there's something wrong with folks who don't have joy and gladness. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Guess what? Most of the world thinks there's something wrong with a person who doesn't have joy and gladness. If you walk into work all sad, people go, what's wrong? It's amazing. Noggins. You know what I'm saying? Deception, perceptions. Something's wrong with her. She's always sad. Well, did anybody give her her medication? Does she, has she seen a doctor? Who knows? That can lead to actually suicide, you know. The people reason that way. She's always sad. She's always, yeah, she's always like, well, you need, she needs to die. Well, why? Because that state can actually lead to a person taking their life. That's what, people, that's what men reason. Then the preacher says, look, you guys shouldn't be sad. <laughs> because the Lord has given a fruit. Is he's given this joy. That's right. The proof is that the redeemer of the Lord should return, come with singing. And the sign everlasting joy should be on the head. Yes. God said you have it. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you don't have it right now, you should be able to get it in, in a half a second. Yes. In case you forgot or something bad happened. You need to get through that. Oh, I'm cooperating with the Holy Ghost. Oh, you are. Over 700 verses of Scripture on joy and rejoicing. Somebody finds one verse of Scripture that says, Blessed are they that mourn. And they're forgetting the whole 700. See, there's my verse. This is my verse. I'm, 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 I'm more. Uh, I have justified my state. No, you have not. Everything must be confirmed in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Huh? And besides that, if your pastor says you don't know what you're talking about, you're supposed to listen. And then he can offer you convincing proofs. Because he's willing to give you that, uh, that, that servitude and that level of submission which is required of him to be ready to give everyone a solid defense for why we believe what we believe or for reason for the confidence that we have in God. We do that. We continually open up the word of God to you. He continually led you in a realm of joy and rejoicing. We continually led you in a place of where you can take a hold of faith, the gift of faith, where you can take a hold of the gifts of the Spirit, where you can begin to flow and operate in a greater realm and dimension of prophecy. Do you, but you, the fact of it is, is, you know, you have to decide when it is that you're going to participate. When, you, when will you cooperate? When will you recognize that even the slightest little bit of rebellion and defiance will lead to the ultimate conclusion that we see in the book of Revelation? where men have come with such hatred against God. It just started against hatred against the parents. Might have started against hatred against some other authority. But it ultimately led to the full-blown state of sin. And it was hatred, open, arrogant hatred against God because he's unjust. He's unjust. He doesn't understand. He's not sensitive to my need. Can't trust him. Where did God say anything about it? First trust the leadership, then trust him. First, first come to a place where you trust the leadership and then trust him. He didn't say that. He said trust him. I believe that a huge number of of, of, of Divorces are simply because of a rebellious woman in the house. She won't listen to her husband. She won't trust her husband. She, won't, she defies her husband. Even in a secular community. Even though I don't believe the verses of Scripture that we read in, in the New Testament perfectly apply because the head, the head of every man is Jesus. The head of Jesus is the Father. So thus the head of the woman is the man. Yet it's still, even outside of that, you take it, it's a spiritual law from the very beginning. God made Eve from the man and brought her to him. And she was subject to him and said at the very, when, especially at the moment in time of the rebellion, he shall have rule over you. It's a spiritual law. I don't want that. We women livers. 
we're working on becoming lesbians ourselves. No, rebel. So we say, well, that's a terrible word to use in church. Well, sin has a nice little sweet beginning. It's so justifiable, but its end is the full-blown iniquity of it all that might somehow embarrass you or, ca or cause you to, to, to be repulsed. Yeah, that's the way it all works. Starts off just like a, I dislike, then it's hate, then it's murder. But God says it's murder by the time it's hate because that's the end of it. Come on, people. We justify everything. We look through whatever, um, uh, you know, view we have that has been given to us based on our personal experiences and our great learning and understanding things. <laughs> I've seen folks, you know, like little arrogant, you know, folks screaming and hollering at a preacher saying, I, I've forgotten more scripture than you've ever known. That's people's attitude. That's a perfect attitude. That exists. I recognize that. I see that all the time, man. People don't say it that way, but they act it that way. They respond that way. That I, the response of, I don't have to listen to you. I can do it my own way. I can go my own way. Nonsense. The end, your, the end of your way is destruction. But I'm doing it all for the Lord. Matt and Hank, don't, the end of your way is destruction. You take heed unto the word of the Lord and do it God's way. The Lord says, this is what Moses said concerning God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all of his ways are judgment. Listen to this. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Here's what Israel's saying. He's going to kill us all. That's what he's saying. He's going to kill us all. That's what he said. Do I, do I need to remind you of the verse of Scripture seeing so you just read it in Numbers? He's going to kill us all. Well, why were they destroyed? Because they led open rebellion. Oh, we also are priests. We are also ministers of the Lord. We are also, they, Korah actually has it right. Uh, Dathan actually has the audacity to say, we are holy too. <laughs> you know what the Lord did with their censors, don't you? How many of you remember what God did with their censors? They were so deceived that people have become, so, pride of life and arrogance will so deceive you that you will actually go get your censor and stand up against the man who, who God used to open up the Red Sea, who God used to deliver the people out of, the, out of their bondage in Egypt with a mighty signs and wonders and miracles and outstretching. There's no, it, it, what it is, is it sets the high bar of, uh, it says, look, if they're gonna act that way after all that they've seen, Guess what you're going to do? Guess what you're going to do? And you're going to rebel like that, and you're going to be the same way and the same arrogance and the same stubbornness and the same de defiance unless you take heed under the Word of God, which they did not do, unless you observe to do all that He has spoken and all that He has commanded. People act like that it's not going to happen. Judgment's happening. It's going to happen. You can justify yourself all you want, but what you better do is take inventory of your life and find out whether or not you meet the standard of which God requires in His Word. Because otherwise you spend an eternity in hell. I don't care what all reasons and excuses you have for why you're supposed to be in heaven. Israel's response, He's just going to kill us all. We're all dead men. Because God's unjust. Because he's harsh. No, he's not going to allow your defiance and your rebellion and your arrogance. Which started with your husband, by the way. In case you didn't know that. God's going to let sin go. So that even the, even the tiniest little bit, the smallest little bit can be shown. For all to see. Men and angels. Of its ultimate end. It turns in. All sin turns into one thing. A great defiance and hatred of God himself. That's where it all leads. Even the little one. Even the little one that you've got to just do more or less every day because God understands. He doesn't understand nothing about sin. He understands about his grace and his mercy. He understands about his great salvation. He understands about his redemption. He understands about how he gave us the most precious gift he had and the most expensive and costly gift he had. The very person, the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal word. 
who was hidden in his bosom, who came and died for us at Calvary's tree, suffering the most hideous death so that you and I, so he could pour out his blood so that you and I could be cleansed from our sin. He understands about the second precious gift that he gave to us, which really would be the third because he gave us life. And then he gave us Jesus who, who, who brought us out of our death into his life. And then he gave us the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us in all truth, to teach us all manner of holiness, to be within on the inside of us almost like a will, almost like the will, but not quite, not quite, because there's still the will. But to be a, such a strong inspiration, such a strong motivation, such a strong source of empowerment, divine ability and abil remembrance, to be able to remember the strength to do, strength to understand, and sometimes when you can understand something, you know, it really helps, doesn't it? You know how Father is? He sorts things out. He says, do you love me? Love isn't about knowledge. You know that? So he says, Adam. He could have told Adam the whole thing that was going to happen to all humanity if he sinned. He said, Adam, don't eat of that tree. And he left it. Because it's about matters of the heart, not matters of the head. He could have said to the rich man, my goodness, if you forsake all and follow me, I'm going to tell you right now, you'll have a hundredfold more in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. He didn't say it. He didn't say to give him a bunch of reason. The, he, revelation belongs to those who obey. God doesn't try to convince and persuade people in their mind. It's about the affections of the heart. He said, go sell all that you have. Because he asked. He came and he asked. What must I do to have eternal life? Jesus laid it out there. He said, all these things I've done from my youth. Jesus looked at him and loved him said, you lack only one thing then. You lack one, only one thing then. Go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. And the guy went away sad because he's not willing to change. People leave sad all the time. I went to church. I was happy. Then I left sad because you weren't willing to change. That's right. I went to church. I was happy. Then I got there. Something happened. There's something weird going on over there. Something weird. I was happy when I got there. And then all they all he did was just make me so sad. Yeah, you're like the rich man. You're not willing to obey. I went over there. I went over there. My, all I could hear was condemnation. True. You know why? Because you're not willing to change. When the Word of God comes and you're not willing to change, that which was conviction immediately turned sour it was the sweet wine of conviction and by your will it turned sour into the bitterness of condemnation immediately it happens instantly with the will decisions are being made constantly your mind god is giving you an ability out of your out of the thinking reasoning realm and even out of the spirit realm to make decisions instantaneously as soon as you see something as soon as you hear something you're making decisions constantly making decisions People want to justify themselves rather than to fall down on their knees and say, I am, I've done wrong. Yes. I'm believing God that there will be a nucleus of people somewhere that will go all the way in transparency with God so he can begin and birth a revival and a great awakening through them. Now, I mean, to tell you something. That's how God's always done it. Yes. So I said, oh, just the sovereign movings of God. God's sovereign movings take place to a people who are cooperative and participative yes. with him. Who are willing to first be partakers of the fruits. Who are willing to first do what they expect that everybody else should do. If we want to sit around and continue to do what they want. And pray God. Oh, get, give us a revival. You're the first one. He's one. So you're going to be the. Your response is going to be your answer to your prayer. It's going to begin with you. It's true. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah, look at the wickedness. I'm looking at it. Look at the stubbornness of the rebellion. I hear it. It's got to begin with you. It's got to begin with me. Father's going to have himself a church somewhere. So he's going to, God starts with a nucleus of people. It doesn't matter if it's just 30 people like it was at Evan Roberts Church. Just 30 people. Actually, it was less than that. It was actually nine people. Nine people. Steadfast going after God. Father, here we are. Make and bear the heart. Lord, being able to respond to the Holy Ghost when he says, yeah, you've been rebe rebellious. Yeah, you've been stubborn. Yeah, you've interpreted the scripture. Yeah, you, woman, you have no right to teach. You have to be under the rulership of a man to even open your mouth and speak the word of God. Ooh, uh-oh. Some of the women run around, I'm an apostle. You cannot be an apostle. It's absolutely contrary to the word of God. 
You're allowed to do the work of the evangelist and you're allowed to prophesy only within the context of those things that God has empowered you within the church to do by the Holy Ghost under authority. Oh, we don't want to hear that. Ah, he's ancient. He's old timey. Somebody told me recently, I'm from the 1500s. I said, no, 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 no. I'm from the zeros. <laughs> That's right. I'm from the zeros. I'm from the days of Jesus Christ. And I got proof text right here that I'm from the days of Jesus Christ. I don't sit around and try to explain away the scripture. I, 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 I spend my life establishing it in God. God's established his word. He don't explain his word. Where does God explain his word? He doesn't explain it. He establishes it. He reveals it. Right. Doesn't explain it. God explains it. Nothing. He doesn't explain his existence. He just says, fool said in his heart, there is no God. God the Father can match. God. That would be the wrong word to say to match which with the brightest person. Because the most intellectual person and the wisest person ever lived, that, all that stuff is foolishness to God. The, the wisdom of the world is foolishness. What people say, oh, this is my ability to understand and reason. Foolishness. So Papa says, I'm going to go with him. And he says, and where are you? What he's saying is abandon all that nonsense. Come, I'll teach you how to think. Come, I'll teach you how to understand. Not a limited realm of that physical place that you now exist in where you interpret and understand everything by the seeing of your eyes, the hearing of your ears, the reasoning of your own thinking based upon your own experiences, the taste, the feel, all that sense realm. Come here. I'll show you what life is. I'll take you out of that confines of that realm, and I'll show you every dimension of life in the context of my goodness and my love and my mercy. But you got to stop. you got to stop making judgments, passing judgments. What you got to do is understand that God's word is judged and God, God's judgments are established. And what he says are the judgments that you speak. The most arrogant thing I know of people just declaring, These are, this is what God said. And they don't quote the scripture. You listen to me. I pray that you're listening to me. I pray that you hear God pleading with your hearts today. I pray that you hear the Holy Ghost pleading with the souls, looking for somebody. Father's eyes go to and fro, looking whom he may empower. Yes, yeah, Satan goes about as a roaring lion, looking whom he may devour. But God's looking for people that he may empower. Forget about the devil. Start responding to the Lord. Just come clean. Get clean. Get clean. Get clean. Most people are all upset because they didn't get it their way. It didn't work. And if you'd have had it your way, Physically, spiritually, materially, it would have been greater damnation to your soul. Amen. Greater trouble. You're sitting there fighting God. In the midst of all of his blessings. You read about it, didn't you? Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's why it's good to just, you know, you, look how quickly you can read the Torah. The first five books. Huh? Pretty quick, eh? Three weeks. Less than three weeks. See, you're setting thresholds for yourself, aren't you? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody in this place is read your word instead of their novels. <laughs> Father, I pray, God, that everybody in this place will come to understand that those things that you have established and said in the work of the Holy Ghost is far better to give attendance to than all the instructors in life. That our opportunities and the riches and the giftings that you made available to us is far greater than gold and silver and precious things and houses and lands and automobiles. Father, I pray that everybody understand they can't have any of it till they learn the basics of submission and humility and brokenness. That those that everybody in this place will come clean to you instead of justifying their state will respond with tender hearts. You know, if I if I say to Ruth Anna or Elizabeth or Anna or Naomi, even though she doesn't understand the words, she got the voice voice tone. But, and of course we didn't have to do that to that her. But if I say, just get a little rough. They'll start crying. The girls will start crying. Why? They have a tender heart. And they take real, take serious. I, I, I can scream and holler at people. At the expense of hurting folks who just come into Jesus. 
And they just sit there stiff neck as ever. Just stubborn. And say, and walk out saying, I'm right with God. That's a religious spirit. It's not a religious spirit to not want to smoke a cigar or get drunk. It is a religious spirit to sit defiantly and say, I don't have to listen. Huh? Don't ever do that again. If you've done it in the past, don't ever do it again. Because the more you do it, the more you seal your doom. The more you seal your doom. Every word that you've spoken, you're going to give an account for. Every word you've spoken against God's anointing and His anointed, you could be damned for. Prove it. I can prove it. You could be. You could be sick for. You know, I was talking to some older preachers the other day. They say, listen, come on, guys. Everybody needs to listen up here now. Don't eat and drink the body of the Lord Jesus Christ unworthily. You're going to have to be worthy of this communion. Because if you do, what's going to happen is you're going to eat and drink damnation to your soul. You're mishandling the anointing, the anointed things of God. Eat and drink damnation to the soul. Is that pretty? Because they're coming to the place. There's people I've had walk by me. I know they're defiant. I know they're arrogant. I know they're disobedient. And I, and I know that uh, they're not submissive. And I go ahead and I give them communion anyways. Because they're under a state of an opportunity to change. But then there comes a place. To say, you either say no. Or you say, if you take this, you're going to eat and drink damnation to your soul. Now, what if you had communion and somebody said that to you? How'd you feel? Oh, I just couldn't believe there's no love in the place. I would say, wow, there is some serious love in the place. Wow. I mean, I've been praying to come under apostolic authority. And wow, we here. My, we in the place. No, 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 you pray all about apostolic authority you want. But the bottom line of it is, when there's apostolic authority, people don't fall down dead over what, how they gave the anoint, how they gave their offering and what, how, what they said to the anointed servant of the Lord. They're going to fall down dead. And everybody who, everybody who reaches in to God for this moving of the Spirit that we so covet, this great last day's outpouring of the Holy Ghost, say with one voice, people are going to fall down dead. God has mercy prolonged for, because people, people have become so rebellious and defiant. They're going to fall down dead. I'm saying, Lord, bring it now. I'm ready. Now, come on, Father. I'm ready. Let your judgments fall. Yes. Huh. Let your fire fall. And I'm Jay right now, but you, you start saying that, you need to take good inventory of your life. When you set the Lord before you and on your right hand that you should not be moved, oh, come on, people. Suddenly, every word that comes out of your mouth, you're giving account for it. Every attitude, you're giving account for it right there. Listen to me. That's a continual prayer. People tell me, I hear people say all the time, oh, I'm continuing praying. you a liar. Because if you did, you would live in such holiness. You would live in such submission by that conscious awareness of the judgments of God and the fact that that you're going to give an account for everything that you say and everything that you do. You would have a different kind of life, and God would take that kind of life and explode His glory through that life. Just like, just like John said, if you say that you know Him and you walk in darkness, you're a liar. Somebody said, hey, I don't believe that a preacher who was anointed of God would call anybody a liar. Well, I'll read it to you here in just a minute. I'll read to you where, John, where Jesus himself called people liars. Think I'm going to stand around and watch people shame Jesus? Think I'm going to stand around and watch people bear false witness against God and not be upset? you mistaken. Not me. You can do that if you want. You can handle those things that you love that way if you desire. Not me. He redeemed me. He saved me. He went to at such great expense to love me. I'm going to tell you right now. I know how Phineas got rewarded for standing up for God's righteous cause. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Give me a javelin. Yeah. And it begins with our ruling our own lives. That's where Papa wants it to be. Because I'm going tell you right now, you go around trying to rule everybody else's life and your life ain't right. Then what are you? Huh? You're just a child of the devil. That's all. Deceived. 
trying to put, you know, put things on others. Because that's, that's, that's what Jesus called the Pharisees. You understand? That's why I get that. That's how I, that's how I deduce that out of John chapter 8. And they were telling people to do things they themselves would not do. They did not do. They take no heed to their own lives. Are you listening to me? Yes. I'm talking. This is revival talk. This is about coming under the floodlight of heaven, allowing God to examine us, take an inventory of our own life, That's saying, Lord, search me. Yes. You got, I'm giving you 90 days, and it basically is the, the time in which this, this year is expiring in, and the transition into the new year to get through the Word of God. You're going to be surprised where you're at on January 1st. All by design. All by design. It isn't about us living in misery over the past. A culture of condemnation would have been, you're, this is who you are and this is who you're always going to be. God didn't have a culture of condemnation. He has a culture of correction and reproof and rebuke and instruction. Huh? We, take it from our, we take it from our teachers. We take it from our coaches. I mean, if I hollered at you like your football coach or your, or your volleyball coach, huh? You'd have a right to walk out. But you didn't walk out on them, huh? So then God wouldn't let you walk out on, on because they're going to criticize your every move. No, you don't. No. You're standing wrong. Can I do anything right? No, you can't. Not, not in, on my team. You can't do anything right. I'm going to show you how to do this right. That's why I'm the coach, and you're here wanting to be on the team. Okay? Even for the people training for the Olympic team, eh? Because I don't care what you know up to this point. Good. What you knew up to this point got you here to be in the Olympics. But forget about it all. I'm going to teach you how to win the gold medal. So you're going to do it different. Oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Can you believe? I'm out. No, you're like... Hearts beating, oh, well, I'm on the team. Huh? Right? Yes. What do I do? Just tell me. I am the clay. Yes. And you are the potter. Uh, what do you, how do, how do we want me to hold my tongue? You can start with that. Everything. Come on now. But we get in church and oh, we all geniuses. You know what I'm saying? We all, we get in church. We all think we know everything. Ain't nobody who knows more than somebody who's been saved for two years. And then the worst part of it is the person got saved for two years, got stuck in their rebellion, and now lived that way for the next 40. That's hectic. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not making up, a, I'm not making up an exaggerated scenario. I've been in the church all my life. I've been in the church longer than anybody here. So if time at task makes any difference, I got you. And then, fundamentally, I've been given the microphone <laughs> by the Holy Ghost. So that really takes precedence. So I'm too up here. you got to listen. And then you can say, well, you're stupid. Even though you've been in church all your life and you got the microphone, I don't have to listen to you because I'm smarter than you. No, i got the anointing. Yes, you do. And now it's not me that's speaking, but God the Holy Ghost speaking. And then you, you say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And you can prove it. Open up your Bible. Read the Word of God 90 days, and then read it again, and then read it again, and you get four times out of every 365 days, 64 days out of the year, okay? Come on. Four times you get to do a year, and then you can step it up and find out, you know what? I can do this in 60 days. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Praise God, eh? Now you get to read the Word of God six times in a year. My. Most people don't make it past 60 days. Too much time in the Word. But there's ways to do it. There's ways to get it done. There's ways to do it every 30 days. And you take a combination of audio tape, audio cassette tape, and the Word to where that you're constantly just bathing yourself in the Word. Somebody said, does audio cassette tape count? Yeah, you need to pay attention, though. It's going to be better for you to be paying attention. But just start at Genesis, get the whole Bible. And now you can do it all on your, on your uh, iPod, yeah. your iPhone. Yep. The Lord has made it so convenient. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes, everybody's, without any, everybody's without excuse. I mean, man, I, no, I'm just like, I'm, you know, I'm just doing, going through this old album of Elton John right now. 
The reality of it is, is you're feeding on something born right out of hell. You're feeding on something that's born right out of the heart of a, of a person demon-possessed who is a homosexual. You're feeding on it. Oh, it's beautiful. Ooh. You're wrong spirit. It testifies, testifies that right there. You have the spirit of the world. You're fellowshipping with the world. God says fellowship and communion with the world is an act of hostility against him. Ah, oh, but come on, man. Don't you like the Beatles? No, I don't. Because I see the witchcraft involved in it. See, I have a gift of discerning of spirits. I can see people moving in witchcraft. I, can see, I see them as sorcerers and warlocks and people who are under the influence of the demonic power for a special time of, of, of releasing rebellion upon the face of the earth. Truly. And that, that's just, just what happens. You start walking in the Holy Ghost and you get ruined. You won't want anything. You'll see everywhere you look in the world, you'll see demon power at work. You get ruined. And then I stand up here and I begin to try to tell people what it is that I see and is what with God. And there's exiting out the door. Ah, look at him. Tell, him. tell us what music to listen to. Well, more importantly, I'm telling you how to live a life of an overcomer. Well, we, it hadn't been working for us. It hadn't been working for you because you've not been following the rules. Because you've not been following the spiritual laws. You defy spiritual laws and expect that you're going to get the blessing at the end. You're not. Not now, not then. I just want to read it one more time. He is the rock. His work is perfect. All of his ways are judgment. He is God of truth without iniquity. He is just and right. Every person that the earth opened up and swallowed, every person that was destroyed by the plague and the disease that went out because of their rebellion, rebellion has a plague and a disease associated with it that will kill you. These things are all describing to us spiritual laws. They're actually being seen and visible. Their consequences of sin is so personified in the Old Testament. And never has it been so personified as when Jesus was crucified. For that is what every sin is worthy of, a hideous death. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we now being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose wound we are healed God made a way so that we can be of him John who had a clear distinction between the law and between grace whom God used to introduce law and grace said a profound very powerful thing over and again in the first epistle of John over and again if there's you know, it, it, when you go ahead and graduate a little bit, you can start memorizing the Scripture. Somebody said, I can't memorize. Yes, you can. When you ask God the Holy Ghost to teach you to memorize, you can memorize. You can start memorizing whole books of the Bible. And then once you memorize them, you always have them. You memorize 1 John. You memorize the first epistle of John and your life will be changed. How do I know? Because I have done it. I memorized the epistles of John. Then I memorized the epistles of Peter. Then I went on memorizing. You do these things. I'm telling you. I'm not just guessing your life be changed. I'm a partaker of this. I'm not asking you to do something I haven't done. If I stand up here asking you to stand up here asking you to do things I haven't done, my goodness, then what kind of a leader would I be? Because you're supposed to follow a, a, a leader in what he does, not what he says. Only. I'm telling you, people, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I know the realm of the life of the overcomer. I'm going to sit and argue with your religious nonsense, your Christian philosophy. You, I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to hold for, forth the words of life. And the words of life will produce the life of God in you. Amen. That's the way Papa put it together. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be disqualified because of the nonsense actions of a few. Try, people try to superimpose some lying thing upon me and other people anoint. That's what Satan does. Superimpose. Jesus said they called me, you know, Beelzebub. What are they going to call you? They said I was demon possessed. What are they going to say about you? That's fine. I'm in good company. If you want to accuse me of this thing and that thing, fine. Whatever. Bottom line of it is I'm going to speak the word of God while you're saying that. I'm just going to declare the word of God. Oh, well, it's not you declaring the word of God. It's how you say it. 
Let me help you with that. Stand back, Moses. I'm going to kill him. That's what Papa said. You just read it. Stand back, Moses. I'm killing him. And it wasn't just on one occasion. I'm done with them. I'm wiping them out, man. They're stiff necked. They won't ever, they're not going to change. Oh, well, I don't believe in a God that way. He is just. He is righteous. He is true. Huh? Are you listening to me? Huh? I don't believe in a God who's going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Whether you, reckon, whether you are willing to acknowledge it or not, you do. Because the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live righteously and soberly and godly in this world because we know that there is a coming day of judgment. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're, in the, if you're up in the backwoods of the Himalayas. I don't care if you're in the jungles of the Congo. If you're in the tundra of the Arctic. If you're the outback of Australia. Doesn't matter. On some remote island in Indonesia, you know. All men know. And in America, even in Ice Age, they say eye for an eye. Right? Cartoon Ice Age. They quote in the scripture. Are you listening to me? They quote in the scriptures, quote in the word of God. You don't find that anywhere else. The Lord said that. Word of God's everywhere. In America, he just said it's been misrepresented, been misrepresented, and it's lost its potency. So what are you going to do about that? So what are you going to do about that? So what are you going to do about that? What am I, what are we going to do about that? What is the remedy? What is the cure for an evil time? What is, the, what is the cure? How do you redeem the days? How do you redeem the time the days are evil? But think about it now, because God made it very clear what you do to redeem the time for the days is evil. It's made it very clear. What is the church doing? Just the opposite. They're not being filled. They're drinking wine and getting drunk. Oh, we're not getting drunk. We're just eating. Liar, liar. Your pants will be on fire. Because you know good and well, you drink it because you want to get stoned. Because you're miserable inside. Yeah. Sad, mad, or glad. Sad because you don't want to change. Mad because you're stinking Pharisee. Or glad because you a child of the king. You hear the joyful right. sound. And sad, mad, or glad. That's the way it is. God made me a button pusher. <laughs> Somebody says, why is it that you speak on so many different topics when you preach? Well, first and foremost, because I've got so many different topics that I'm addressing. Yes. You know, if there's 100 people in the place, I've got 100 topics to address. Some of you, there's about five things you need to hear because you're not gonna, I'm not going to get to preach to you again. Who knows when you'll find another man of God because they scare us these days. So I'm going to do everything I can do to hit and address every one of your issues so that there might be a possibility that you'll escape damnation. There might be a possibility that you escape damnation. Somebody said, he's from the 1500s. No, I'm not. From the zeros. I'm from the days of Jesus. Hallelujah. Which is not only in the past, his days in the future. And his glorious church shining bright. And his preachers are still just as fiery. And still have just as much authority. You know, people didn't like people. You know what people were mostly upset about Jesus and all the other prophets? They had authority. They told people who were go, who, where they were going and what they were doing wrong. And what would happen if they didn't change. People hate authority. Do you hate authority? If you do, it's proof that you're not a child of God. Because God's people love authority. They love being under the rule. God's people love to be told what to do. God's people love to walk in humility and submission to those who have the rule over them. They love and understand the, the value of a prophets, of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Amen. Now, let me just, I want to get this to you. I want to get this across to you quickly. John, John said, who clearly understood the difference between law and grace. Are you with me? John said this in verse 6. Whosoever 
dwells in Christ Jesus, whosoever has responded to the call, remember John 15, he wrote that one? Yes. Does not sin. Pretty radical, eh? Yes. Oh, well, let's get a couple of theologians and five scholars and try to figure it out. No. It's just as simple as go in there and make your bed. Say, please. Yes, sir. No, sir. God just showing us how, how we're supposed to mind our manners. Those who are, whosoever dwells in Christ Jesus. Does not sin. You'll have to go outside to sin. You'll have to go outside to drink your alcohol. I know there's churches that have alcohol parties in their church now. You have to go outside to drink your alcohol. Because I'm going to let you drink it in here. I'll kick it right out your hands. Good. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, I got some kick. Oh. Believe me. I don't show it, but I do. You have to go outside to smoke your cigar. I'm going to sit in here and choke up on your cigar. Huh? You don't have to go outside to cuss. Huh? You don't have to go outside to act rebellious. You try to tell me to be quiet. You're going to find out who's going to be quiet real quick. I'll take you by the nap of your neck and throw you out this building. Huh? Because I'm not going to allow it in here. You, are you with me? I'll not wait for the ushers. I don't need to wait for the ushers. Oh, ushers, get them. I, I get them. You sit still. Just relax. Huh? Because I have rule in the house of God. It's my responsibility. Oh, man, you sound like something from another age. I'm in another age. I'm in another realm. I'm in the state of grace, in the age of grace. In the age of the rule of Christ Jesus, in other words. In the age where now we are empowered to live out the very life of God. This is a state of grace. The state of grace to be a new creation, to be born again, to be born of the Spirit, to have the floodgates of heaven open through your life, to have God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost come live and dwell on the inside of you. The state of grace, the age of grace. This grace, this new birth experience, sins washed away, new heart, new spirit, came by Jesus Christ. Came by Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost come and dwell on the inside of you. Came by Jesus Christ. That's what came by Jesus Christ. That's grace. Everything that Jesus brought to us is grace and must all be considered if you want to understand grace. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. You need to take inventory of your life and you need to get right with God. Quit justifying your sinful state. Saying you're going to be okay because that's not really the way it is. Somebody said, ah, oh, we need balance. God said if he sinned, he'd forgive us 490 times in a day. Yeah, if you forgive others from your heart, he will. And that's the balance to this verse of Scripture. They both say the same thing. They both speak the same exact thing. There's no difference in the two. I'll give you some balance. I'll give you some balance. God, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. That's some balance for you. Okay? I'll give you the dynamics to play. Your will against theirs. Okay? Are you listening to me? Yes. Now I'm going to go on. This is the guy who understood the difference between law and grace. Let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that sins is of the devil. Now go justify that. You can't. Take inventory of your life. Get right with God. Say, Father, I want to do it your way. I want to be taught of God. Get right with God. Get real with God. Quit justifying things. Quit listening to Christian philosophy and start hearing the Word of God. Amen. Come on, people. If you can't read, there's a download from apps. Cost you about 30 cents. I think the more expensive one's like four or five bucks. Something like that. It ain't that, it ain't that expensive to get the Word of God nowadays. If you're deaf, they offer it in Braille. <laughs> Just kidding.
Four people are laughing. Everybody else is still mad. Sad. For this purpose, grace came. For this purpose, grace came. Or for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. For this purpose, grace came. Everywhere you see Jesus, put grace. Because he's it. Everywhere you see Jesus. Somebody say, oh, grace is this. Everywhere you see grace, put Jesus. Put Jesus. Is that simple enough? Yes. Uh -huh. That grace and truth came by Jesus? Yes. Everywhere you see Jesus, put grace. Everything that he said to do, that's the description of what it means to live in grace. Walk in grace. Somebody said, oh, it's too hard. No, it's too different. Not too hard, just too different. It means that you can't live in this world anymore. You have to come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord. It means that you have to make a decision that you're not walking where everybody else is walking. You're not doing what everybody else is doing. You're going to do what God, the Holy Ghost, is doing. Everybody's got a judgment to say. Everybody's got to say, ah, he's too hard. He's too harsh. He's too overbearing. Oh, you're blaming on God. You're saying about God. Because that's ultimately where sin le leads. That's where it leads. Just blaming it on God. You're saying about the Lord. So if, if you could just begin to understand that Father is allowing sin because he wants to prove and show and demonstrate to all creatures for all time that the slightest little bit of compromise of sin ultimately really leads to the full-blown manifestation of what everybody's going to see. And we know where it ultimately ends. People hate God. They say that everything about his ways and everything about his life is completely unreasonable and undesired and you can't impose it on anybody. Somebody said, you can't impose your belief on me. Oh, yes, I can. I can. I'm going to impose it on you right now. You're either going to accept it or reject it. What are you, what's your decision? Well, I'm not making a decision. Well, God says silence is approval. In this sense, it's silence is with rejection, to reject Jesus. Because you just read that, didn't you? Huh? If a man hears his wife swear a vow and doesn't step up, then she is fully obligated and so is he. And I can go on and on. Right? You know, saying silence is approval. Can't be silent. Can't be silent. Tikasa bo yishikana meyateya. Today, you need to understand. If you confess him before men, he'll confess you before the Father. If you're ashamed of him in such an evil and perverse generation, but, but people can't even write that. Evil and perverse. Because if you start saying, that everything around you is evil and perverse, then you'd ultimately have to say you're evil and perverse too because you've been accommodating it, perhaps. You've been liking it. I mean, when people are playing Beyonce, I guess is her name, songs in the sanctuary, in a sanctuary for youth night, they need to go listen to her testimony where she says she doesn't even like herself when she looks at herself because something comes on her. And makes her a different person when she's doing it. She, she's demon-possessed. She's demonized. And you can't see it in her eyes. It's just because you have no discernment. I mean, I heard this and I started to look and see what, who this person is. The people would actually pay, play her songs in the sanctuary and defend her. That Look, you know, music's already sanctified because all music belongs to God. That's, that's exactly what, that is the voice of Satan. That is the, the actual voice of Lucifer himself. It's his voice. And now it's could be coming, coming out of people who are supposed to be leadership. Well, it started, it started back like this. Oh, we're all unrighteous. We're all going to sin more or less every day. Show me that verse of Scripture. Oh, we're all unrighteous. We're all going to sin more or less every day. It's a lie. It's a lie. You sin, you have the devil. And then Paul chimes in. And I'm going to close with this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to close with this. He says, let no one deceive you. For because of these things comes the wrath of God 
upon the children of disobedience. So he names in Ephesians chapter 5, just quote verse 6, right? He names in Ephesians chapter 5 things that everybody in this nation is saying, it's all right, you've got to approve it. You're wrong if you don't approve homosexuality. You're wrong if you don't approve homosexual marriage. You're wrong if you're trying to impose upon us that we can't have sex before marriage. You're wrong if you're trying to tell us that we can't live riotously, on and on and on. And it's actually a defiance against God, you see. People just want to say, oh, it's this little segment of Christians and they are oh, a bunch of warped, you know, Neanderthal people, psychologically. Because there's still evolution going on like it went on naturally, physiologically. It's now going on psychologically. And those people who can't really, you know, understand the basis, uh, tenets of, 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 of those things that modern society espouses as proof, you know, that they somewhere Cro-Magnum man or Neanderthal or whatever. Everybody's got their concept. Everybody's got their theory. Are you with me? Are you listening to me? Bunch of nonsense, craziness, devil talk. Huh? It's just all it is. Nonsense. Saying that they, oh, it's just those churches. It's just those fundamentalist Christians. They hate, 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 hate. Hate, 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 hate. There was a guy the other day. Um... He was supposedly, it was one point in time, he's a uh, Baptist, and he was basically making defense that all these conservative Christians against homosexuality and everything else, they just like ISIL. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I see it. That's right. It's a new hatred. Because we're going to be hated. We're going to be hated by all nations for his namesake because it's going to come to a point that everything that God says in his word is intolerable. It's intolerable. It's unjust. You have no right to put that on somebody else. Oh, yeah. And Jesus, afterwards, afterwards, Jesus is going to come with a rod of iron. And he's going to rule with a rod of iron. And he's going to slap some people upside the head. So he said, what are you talking about? He's going to knock heads. He's going to knock people. He's going he's to smash them. Yeah. The lowly lamb of Galilee. You mean the lamb of God? Oh, you mean gentle Christ Jesus? Yeah. Gentle Christ Jesus. He says he will sm smash the vessels as a potter smashes a a marred vessel. And, and he's going to stomp it to find dust. Just like Moses did with the, with, the, with the golden calf. Here, Aaron. Oh, let us rise up and worship the Lord that brought us up out of Egypt. Aaron. That's why the Lord was going to destroy Aaron. But Moses made intercession. Somebody said, oh, they twisted his arm. Yeah, it's twisted. And didn't nobody tell him to say, rise up, let us worship the Lord. Actually use God's name in vain. Let us rise up and worship Yehoah, who brought us up out of Egypt. I'm talking about the calf. Watch out, people. Watch out, people. Deception is powerful. I mean, let no one deceive you for, for these things. The wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. And he names them. And people don't want to be, oh, you can't push your beliefs on me. Oh, yes, I am commanded to push my belief on you. That's right. I'm commanded to tell you, whether you like it or not, you're on your way to hell if you do these things. The wrath of God. Well, he's a loving God. No, that's a different God. I'm talking to you about God who so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He says his wrath abides on you if you will not repent and change. He commands all men to repent. Jesus called no one to salvation. He called every person to repentance. John called no one to salvation. He called them to repentance. All we do is we call people to salvation. Oh, repeat after me. And if you just say these simple words, then your name be written in the Lamb Book of Life. No, that's nonsense. You repent, you change, you call upon the name of the Lord God, you believe with all your heart, you'll be changed. And there'll be a proof and a witness that you change. And the Holy Ghost will bear witness with your spirit. The spirit of holiness will bear witness with your spirit that you're holy too. Or that you're a child of God. Or that you yourself also walk in the same nature of Jesus Christ. Or walk in the same spirit of the Holy Spirit. That's what the word of God says now. Come on. Father has put his words in my mouth and in my heart. You put them in your, word, in your mouth and in your heart too. Because that's, right. that's, right. that's what he's promised to everybody who will believe. No one who, there's nobody in here who wants to make compromises. If you want to make compromises, you're not right with God. People are always talking about compromise. Compromise is demonic. Every dimension of compromise is demonic. That's the way, that's his tactics. He gets you compromised just a little bit. Oh, what you saying? What you saying? The, I just went to, I just went to a, a Christian marriage a seminar and they told us about compromise. It's demonic. God has no compromise in his kingdom. It's all agreement. 
But then how am I ever going to get my husband to agree with me? Exactly. Exactly. You devil. Exactly. Uh-oh. He's, he's, he's old-timey. He's from the 1500s. No. I remind you. They, I can hear him dialing 911 right now. Surely there's a law by which we can arrest him. Listen, dear people, it's coming to this point. We have to transition. The Lord told me, the Lord told me a number of years ago, get ready. It's disaster, devastation is coming. You have time to repair, time to prepare. I feel like I'm out of time to prepare. That's what I'm feeling. I wake up, I'm waking up this morning saying, if people think that God is going to allow this stuff to stand, that things are going to continue on as they've always been, because after all, we've always had ups and downs, you know. And we ain't ever had this. We haven't ever had a place where this United States of America has lifted up its fist before God and said, we don't have to obey your laws. Homosexual marriage, marriage between a woman and a woman or a man and a goat is fine. I mean, a man and a man, forgive me. That's coming, man and goats later. Because there's no innocent. There's no innocent. There's no innocent. People gonna wanna marry their dog for a tax write-off or whatever. <laughs> So that they can both travel on this in coach together or, or whatever it is. I don't know, whatever it is. I mean, somebody said, this is grieving me. Hey, I'm telling you right now, this shouldn't be grieving you. And all the other stuff you've been allowing ought to be grieving you too. Paul's going to let it come to its full right state. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove to the world. I'm going to prove to angels, both holy and fallen. And to men, that any form of sin, any, any slightest little bit of sin, will always result in this chaotic end. He's doing it in His grace and His mercy. Because Father's going to have a new heaven and a new earth where He dwells only righteousness. And everybody that's going to be in is going to be saying, Lord, you're righteous and you're just and you're true. All your ways are righteous and just, just and true. All the things that you see and understand and know that we must do, we see that it's right and it's the only way to to live and you showed us you've allowed in your mercy proofs of it so it can never exist again I pray that you'll hear me I pray that you hear the spirit of the Lord calling to you that there is a place of safety the gangplank is down God's inviting everybody in he's saying come on into the ark of safety I'm telling you right now I'm, I'm writing a book right now called the rise of the seventh and eighth kingdom the last chapter is the final the last chapter is the total collapse of society. We know that's what's going to happen. God shows us in His Word. We move in towards that. And it's time people get, it's time people prepare. You can't prepare in a day of day devastation. Because the day of devastation is going to reveal what manner of person you are. And if you've if you've been abiding under the secret place in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty. You'll be preserved. You'll be kept. A thousand of falls your right hand. Ten thousand by your side. It should not come nigh you. There'll be famine and desolation. You will not know it. You'll be kept. But if you don't abide there, if you're waiting for that day, you'll be taken away. People, God the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord is like a wind that drives the chaff away. Don't be chaff. We have to let God drive away the lies and the deception and the false teaching. Christian philosophy that has disguised itself as the Word of God. Start understanding your need for the Word individually. Your need to know the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to understand what God requires of you and what the Holy Spirit is going to lead you and guide you to do. I want you to stand with me. I'm not done. I really ought to be on every television station in, in America, on every Christian station anyways. Not because I think I'm somebody, but because what I'm saying is true. And, because what I, and, and if somebody else was up saying it, I would say, let them preach. I'll go send them money. Why repeat? Why, why be redundant? Why, re, why, you know, why not just focus? There's a lead man right there. Just focus on him. Just keep him going in prayer and finances. 
Right now, people's finances, money are going to things that are nonsense. They sit and listen to somebody persuade them that if they, that the Holy Ghost is moving on them to sin right now, to send some gift based upon some crazy notion of some number system or whatever. And gullible Christians just send it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, they got a half a billion in the bank. They don't even need the funds. They just, they just stocking up. And it always sin compounds, you know. Everybody got all upset at Tammy Faye because she, her and uh, uh, her husband, they uh, built a little air conditioning doghouse, right? That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Sin just keeps piling up. The new Tammy Faye, who took over from her spot, actually went and bought a quarter million dollar uh, travel van, you know, big coach thing. To take her poodle to the new gospel land they built over there in Orlando. See, it keeps compounding. I bring it up just because it keeps compounding. Huh? You see what I'm saying? The Christian community had an uproar because somebody built a little air conditioning doghouse in the heat of the summer in North Carolina. And then what they did was they just went ahead and promoted the worst part of it and the next part of it. I'm about ready to just go ahead and tell everything I know. I'm about ready to go ahead and tell everything I know. When you have a practicing homosexual running TBN for umpteen years and everybody has no discernment for it, we just ought to go ahead and just tell everything we know. I, just, I feel like I've, I better be careful. I'm going to pray about it more before I tell everything I know. So, so with that going on, surely the government's going to go ahead and take all bans and restrictions off homosexuality because the church that stood up in its place to stand against iniquity and lawlessness abdicated by themselves being the servant of it. And we all threw in Jesus. I'm not going to be careful. Not because I'm concerned about people hearing me on um, the web, because most men of God who has any who know anything already know all this. It ain't no new. There's no news. New news. And it's worse state than it ever was. It's coming down. Just in case that, just in case the echo got you. It's the worst state than it ever was, and it's coming down. I said it's coming down. It's false witness. It's reproaching the name of Jesus. And you think Father's going to let that stand? He's going to glorify the name of his only begotten Son. Christian community empowering a new rise of a new kind, kind of hatred. People are going to hate me. And everybody like me. Because I'm going to condemn sin. Because God's condemned it. And I'm going to speak out against it. In warning people. That if you continue in it. That you're a child of disobedience. I don't care who, how much a Christian you say you are. You're a child of disobedience. And the wrath of God, not the love of God, the wrath of God abides on you. Not the love of God. Oh, God still loves you. The wrath of God, get your doctrine right. Somebody posted on the web this morning. Oh, when you're sinning, God still loves you. He just saying, go and sin no more. You need to work out your doctrine. Hello. You're just giving people a license. You're condoning them. You're saving their iniquity. Sending them to hell in a handbasket. Because you're not willing to stand up. Probably because you're compromising yourself. Because you have to compromise something to make such a statement. To go along with such, such a heresy. God help us. We're in perilous times now. I'm telling you. I don't know how else to tell people. There is a burden of the Lord. The burden of the Lord is just to cry out against sin and iniquity. Say, flee from the wrath that is to come. And I'm just saying this. I'm saying this in context of your life personally. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to us. We have to recognize of our own life. We've got to take inventory of our own life. We're going to have to get, we're going to fall down upon our face and say, Father, I'm not interested in having it my way. I want to be changed in every way. I want to go from glory to glory, from grace to grace. 
In other words, literally what the Lord is saying is grace upon grace. You know, actually, it was a guy from Princeton University that wrote a thesis on grace upon grace. And proving that it's not just grace. That it's not just from grace to grace. As though we were moving from one state to the next. But it's literally God pouring out grace upon grace. Glory upon glory. That the effulgency of his presence has come to commune with men. And men have no right to remain the same. A Princeton University theologue. Yeah, well, you know what? If the holiness movement and the Pentecostal church isn't going to do it, bother raise up people from, the Princeton, from Princeton University at Harvard or wherever else people say that somebody can't possibly come from that knows the Lord. And then he's got all the degrees and everybody's got to listen. Grace upon grace, glory upon glory, the effulgency of his presence to where that men have no right to continue living as they have. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. You need to grab it because you've got seducing spirits around you pulling you in to all kinds of nonsense. Dear people, I'm praying down the satellites right now. We don't need them. I don't need no stinking satellites. You don't need Christian t television. I'm praying the stuff out. It's rotten to the core. This incurable wound from its head to its foot. It's all about merchandising people and propagating some success among men. It's lies. It's not about Jesus. It's not about calling men to repentance. It's not about holiness. It's not about a revelation of heaven. It's a bunch of talking heads deceiving men with empty words. I pray God raises you up. I pray those of you that are here in this place and watching by the web and possibly by YouTube. You say enough of the nonsense. Enough of it. And understand the effectiveness that God will give you in prayer, petition. I was praying yesterday and I'm just talking to the Lord about the state and the situation of the United States of America. And I started to say, I started to say, well, Lord, you, you, you just do it according to what you will. And I just felt a rebuke from the Holy Ghost. He said, I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying, you prophesy. What do you will? Do you want this to go on like this? You want it to continue on like it is? Are you willing to stand by and watch this nonsense go on where the things of the Spirit are, are made profane, where the name of Jesus is blasphemed? God started talking to you like that. You're going to say, shake it, Father. Shake it. No. Bring it down. Change everything, oh God. Don't allow any of this stuff to stand. We're going to find out whose prayers are effective. People who want to go on crying out to God, oh, bless us, bless us, bless us, so we can continue to blaspheme your name and live like we've been living. Or whether it's people who cry out, Father, we have in every way forsaken sin and iniquity to walk with you and we pray in Jesus name that all the stuff that misrepresents your name comes down today Jesus. now Jesus. let there be no delay let your true church arise and always does in the midst of a fire it always does in the midst of chaos and disaster always always people just want to live in the bless me club Oh, don't say that. Oh, don't say that. No, I haven't got my, we, we, we don't have our little uh, security nest built yet. Our, our nest egg, that's what they say. Our nest egg. Sit on that thing, man. You can have all the nest egg there is in this world. You spend eternity and, and miss heaven and you've missed it all. It's time people prepare. Some people lay up. Some people wake up from their sleep. Father in his mercy is going to wake people up. Father's not going to let it stand. You listen to me. Father will not let it stand. Are you of it and in it? Listen to me. Father is not going to let it stand. Here's what he says. Come out from among them. Anybody who's on my side, come out over here. Come apart with me into a solitary place. Father's saying it. Listen to me. Father's not going to let it stand. He's going to let his judgment fall upon it. You believe me? Somebody said, I don't believe in judgment. Watch. Watch. 
I'll make a real simple for you this morning as I'm closing. Sin is of the devil, righteousness of God. Who are you of? God's not going to let this stuff stand. This shame and this reproach and this dragging all kinds of sin and rebellion and iniquity into his house is going to be judged. Where do you stand? You have to decide whether or not you're going to be a part of it because Father's not going to, Father's not going to let Jesus' name be profaned anymore. Amen. I'm saying, Father, whatever it takes, I don't care what it takes, whatever it takes, whatever we have to go through. There is a war coming that will top every disaster you've ever thought of. And I'm telling you, it's before. I'm not, I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about the Armageddon. There is a war coming. There is devastation and desolation coming. And the United States of America has, has said to God, we do not have to live under your law. Thus, they said, we do not have to live under your protection. Thus, they said, we do not have to live under your provision. They just didn't recognize what they were saying. We do not have to pay attention to you. We do not have to trust in you. We do not have to acknowledge you. Thus they said, we do not have to have your protection. We do not have to have your provision. The same God that we've submitted ourselves as our leaders of this nation have been willing to take a stand. You can say, well, we found corruption in their life, whatever. Doesn't matter. At least from a national pulpit and from a national point of view, they led the country in a place, in a position saying, we are a Christian nation. We are standing here observing who Christ Jesus is, who the living God is. This is who we are. And this, this is the moral stand that we take that is uh, according to his word and according to his laws. And we said no to that. But it was from that that we found our provision. It was from that that we found our protection. It was from that that we found our blessing. The church was an advocate of moral living. I'm so blessed with Mike Bickle taking a stand and saying, look, you know what? This is nonsense. Oh, this mess is nonsense. It's creating a compromised life. Come on, Mike. Come on, other people, shake it. Because the Lord told me that there was coming such a compromise with iniquity that it would create a gulf and people would find out that they could not go that far in agreeing with sin. And it's sorting out big time now. It's sorting out big time now. And it's going to sort out even more. And the rebellious will be found out. And the obstinate will be found out. And the defiant will be found out. Because those are the first people God's going after. They're the murmurers and the complainers. They're the ones who will not listen and obey. Those are the ones who always take offense when the man of God speaks. They're going to be found out. You believe me? You just got finished reading it. In Exodus and Numbers, especially. And of course, the Deuteronomy was the recap. They're going to be found out. God's not changed. God's not changed. He's not changed. People want to try to deny his existence. I think, the, I, think the, I think the worst fool is not the person who says there is no God. It's the person who's a Christian who lives like there's none. Who says they're a Christian. Who's a Bible-toting Christian and lives like there's no God. And lives like they don't have to give an account to him. Today, I'm just calling every person in this place. God's calling every person in this place to make an inventory of life. I'm not interested in counting heads and numbers of people that come and say that they want to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. I'm interested in the people who cross the line and say, we're going with God. I'm looking for people who's, who are going to cross the line from death into life, from living for themselves versus living for God. For living in the world versus living in the kingdom. It's time for people to cross the line. All the old preachers were that way. It wasn't until the days of Billy Sunday that all of a sudden there had to be a mass announcement of everybody saved. Before that, preachers examined folks. Called them to a place of repentance and said, you, you realize that what you're saying is now you're no longer going to be visiting the pubs. You're no longer going to be hating people around you. You're no longer going to be fighting. You're no longer going to be rebellious. They go through the list. Before they would serve him communion and before they would administer baptism. 
This is the way it was. Go read your history book. You got examined and cross-examined. You learned right off the you learned right out the right out the gate. An authority in the church. The people who don't want to have. You can't, now it's like, you can't tell me I'm not saved. You can't tell me who you think you are. You can't tell me I'm not right with God. The Word of God can tell you. The Word of God plainly can tell you. When God says, let no one deceive you with empty or vain words. For, the, for because of these things, which he just named, in chapters 2 through 5, because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience have been clearly identified separate from the children of obedience. Make no mistake. And I pray in the reading of your word, reading of the word of God, as you participate over these 90 days, these things will be fleshed out for you and revealed to you and understood by each one of you on a level that never before you have seen. That you'll clearly see the difference between light and darkness, good and evil, truth and lie, right and wrong, God and Satan, the children of disobedience and the children of obedience, those who are saved and those who are lost. Because we want you just to understand that until that day and that moment comes, there can be no real clear surrender. There can be no real clear consecration. There can no really be, there can no, no, never really be an act of s surrendering yourself t to this sanctification. Listen, people, let me tell you something. We love you almost as much as this baby. I mean, we love you. We really love you. When you wake up to that in the morning, I can't get any work done when she's around. It's just like, I'm over there trying to get my work done and she's sitting there smiling with those big bright eyes. It's like, how do I do anything? Father loves us. He loves us. He wants to take care of us. He wants to care for us. He wants to provide for us. He wants to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And both are together. Both are together. I want you to raise your hands towards heaven right now. Today, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, if you, in other words, if you've never asked him to come and be Lord of your life, master of your life, come live on the inside of you. Today, Father gives you the opportunity. It's not difficult. It's not hard. All you got to do is believe with all of your heart. Say, I've decided. I'm turning my back on sin. I'm going to walk with Jesus from this day forward. I'm going to learn the ways of righteousness. I'm going to learn those things which God desires to teach me. If you'll do that, if you'll consecrate yourself to that, Father has promised us that in calling upon the name of Jesus to be able to do that, for without Him you can't do it, that He will come and He will change you and He will be the one that will empower you and give you the ability to live such a life. How easy is that? And then living the life is proof that you really did what He said, that you had the experience that He's provided, the miracle that He wants to work. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I commission you by the Spirit of the living God, turn your life over to Jesus. I commission you in the name of Jesus Christ to allow the power of God, the working of God, to shine as a floodlight into your soul. So that everything could be measured right now that is as though you were standing before the judgment of the seat of Christ right now. That you are being now, at this moment in time, examined by the Spirit of truth. Let God show you everything that he wants you to do and then recognize that he will empower you and enable you to do it. Resign and resolve yourself now in Jesus' name to follow him, to be led by him. Separate yourself from all the ideas of men and foolish beliefs because Satan can convince you that you're doing the right thing when you're not doing what God said to do. Say to convince you that you're okay when you're not doing anything that God said to do. So in Jesus' name, go free. Go free from deception. 
Jesus' name. I put the blood of Jesus on you. Go free from sin. Go free from sickness. Go free from disease. Go free from iniquity. Go free from the blindness of heart and mind. I command you in Jesus' name. Let everything be conformed to the image of the Son, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Sickness, go. Sin and iniquity and addiction, go. Lies and deception, go. In Jesus' name. I want you to say with me, say, Lord Jesus. Strengthen me in my body. To stand against sickness and disease. Lord, strengthen me in my soul. To love only you. To desire only holy emotions. And those pleasures that are at your right hand. Strengthen me. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil, because you're in charge. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. And that includes now. Say, Lord Jesus, I turn my back on sin. I turn my back on this world. I look to you you. to empower me, to to teach me, to to lead me me. in all your ways of life. life. I will follow you. you. That's all the Lord is asking. He's asking you to come follow him. Be led by him. Let him teach you. Amen. It's going to be an active It's going to be an active participation of your will to start listening to the Holy Spirit saying to you, that's the world. That's of the world. That is, those things do not belong to my realm of holiness and purity and righteousness and you must renounce them and you must turn from them. And it's time you start hearing in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you that it'll be a greater act of, it will be a greater act of prayer and intercession than anything else going on in your life. To do it. In Jesus' name, this old cold gets off your body, baby. It gets off your body. It gets off this baby's body. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let me just tell you what this kind of a meeting should, re- which this should result in. A prayer meeting. A place where you begin to pour out your heart to Father. Where you begin to respond to His call by talking to Him and and, and consecrating your life and saying, yes, Lord, let your floodlight shine upon me. This is a time for you to go to your knees. And I pray that that's what you'll do throughout this day. And it won't just stop here today, but you just continue on. Because we've stirred you up by putting you in remembrance of these things. Lest at any time you should let them slip. And, you know, so but before you go, I want, I want to invite all of you to come and share with us and participate with us in the things that the Lord has commissioned us to do. And the way he's done that is he's commissioned us to honor him with the first fruits of all of our increase. So the Lord blessed you this week and you had increase in your life. And so the Lord says, bring a tithe, bring a tenth of it into my house. And he's promised that when we do, when we honor him with our substance. And, of course, in the New Testament, the Lord didn't limit it to that. Paul opened it wide open and he said, look, he said, if you give generously, you shall reap generously. We're gonna, if you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. Either way, you reap. And he built on something and enlarged it even in a greater way. But the fundamental or the foundation of it is, is blessing and honoring the Lord with a tenth of all that you have, a tithe of all that you have. And so Father has promised that that would be a part of how you participate in the miracle of provision. You know, if you say, well, I've been, I'm, you know, I've been paying my tithes and just you know, like they've been, you know, 
pain protection money or whatever. And nothing's been working out. No, God wants more than, He wants your heart first and foremost, you know. And that, then the finances are just a token of where your heart is, the state of your heart. But the most important thing I want to make, you know, help you understand is it's participating with a miracle. It honestly is participating with a miracle because the Lord has called us to go everywhere and preach the gospel and the financial means and provision that that is, that is necessary to accomplish that is quite dramatic. It's quite substantial. I mean, the things that I, that, that we are running wide open with right now and that you are participating and partnering with us in and you're giving uh, is, is an open door to missions in a unique way to where we're sending, we're raising up missionaries that have sustainable resources to reach their whole nation. And, you know, we, we got to take that up another notch because, you know, I, I was explaining to my family the other day, look, I'm so tired, I'm falling asleep as I stop breathing. And um, so we're going to have to find a way to where that not just a few of us are doing all of the work, but where we can hire the work to be done. But, I mean, we just haven't had the financial provision to do that. And we've still got a lot of things to do. And so I'm saying that, and you say, well, look, you know what, we're, I've been doing, and you can say, well, we've been doing the best we can, Pastor. Well, that's good. I'm just saying, look, let's take it to another level. God will work a miracle. There is a miracle. And, of course, when all the finances are done, when, when we have everything built and everything is properly in place, the human resources that we need to be able to take the leadership, you know, is more important than the infrastructure and the finances, because I'm not just going to hire someone who's head of fishery science or head of horticulture or hort of, head of animal husbandry that doesn't have the same kind of passion for the lost. Because in Asian Middle East, the primary way, primary way, way they minister is they just talk about the Word of God all day while they're working. And they relate the Word of God to their working. And so David and Geneva were perfect when they went to China to teach the, the, the house church there how to do bees and care for bees because they just always that's who they are they just always talking about Jesus they want to preach more than they want to teach you know something important and we have to have that because of the way that we're going to be training the people that we're bringing over from Asia to start with and then expand out into the Middle East but starting with Asia and you know we just we just have to have people praying with us I mean we're passionate about this we're just we're so passionate about it. And our, the evidence of our life is proof of our passion. And so just hook up with us for a greater miracle. Amen. Watch what the Lord does with your life and through your life. As you, be, as you believe God to be fully used by Him to see the culture of this generation changed by the great revelation of the power of God manifested through your life. And when every one of God's people begin to feel that way, that are in this place, then there will be a move of God that cannot be stopped. When everybody feels the way I feel about these things, there'll be revival that'll touch the whole of the world. And so you need to follow me because I'm not following you. I just want to make this clear. I'm not following you. There's some people in here who thinks I'm supposed to follow them, acquiesce to their opinion. I promise you before the living God, I lie not. I will not acquiesce to your opinion ever. So get over it now. And I just have to say that because I feel a holy indignation about it. I just have to say it. I feel a holy indignation. God knows what people are saying in secret. And when I feel that holy indignation, I'll come out at it. Somebody said, who are you hollering at now? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you right now, rebellion is the greatest hindrance to the revelation display of the power of God. It is. And because I've not allowed it, it has been the biggest hindrance to my ministry among men. So I said, why is it you think the church don't grow? Because I won't allow rebellion. Because I won't tolerate it. Because I speak with authority. That's why. It's why. Oh, why? You know, if you had God-blessed ministry, you'd have more people out. My, look, look how long you've been around. You've been there for 30 years. Goodness. I mean, throw in the towel. Don't you know when you licked? It doesn't matter, man. If I came to your church, give me, just give me, give me like 10 minutes in your church. You can figure out why I don't have any bigger ministry. It ain't going to be because I'm not preaching the word. And it isn't going to be because I'm not smiling while I do it. 
And it's not going to be because I don't have a music ministry. It's going to be because I'm not going to tolerate rebellion. I'm going to call it out. I'm going to shine the light on it. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just do it, man. Let's just do this. Just get, let's just get in agreement. Amen. Come on, you tell her, baby. Just come worship the Lord where you're giving. Watch what Father will do. He's going to bless you. Keep him first. Watch what he'll do. He'll, he'll take good care of you. He'll take you all the way. Hallelujah. He'll take you all the way. Baby, you ready to go to China? I love you so much. We'll find a bunch of people and hug them. I mean, find a bunch of people and hug them. It's a command. So I don't feel like hugging anybody. Start hugging them, you'll start feeling more like it. Same way with praying. Just start praying, you'll feel more like it. Same way with singing. Start singing, you'll feel more like it. Amen. Start shouting, you'll feel more like it. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Dad, we, we gonna, we're not going to be rebellious. No, sir. We recognize your authority as the man of God. Amen. We're just so happy we have you looking out after us. We're not going to jump out the windows. Hey, come back tonight. Come back tonight. We'll, we'll watch as the power of God moves, touches your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody wants prayer for anything, I'm happy to pray for you and with you and for you. But especially tonight, just come back tonight. We'll, we'll pray for anybody who's got any sickness or disease in their life. And Lord, to touch you and heal you. Just come back tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Morostaya Pokanaya. Estepirini. Estepirosotana. See you. 